jeepers. You're listening to Smash or Pass. With JB. With JB, Millie, and... I forgot the rest of the name. <laughs> With JB. Hello. Me, Millie. No, wait, can I redo my intro? <laughs> <We can't>. Smash. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> and of course, Rihanna. Okay. Oh. <laughs> nice try, Jamie. Oh Jesus! <laughs> I don't know what to do. Oh jeepers! Oh, jeepers. <laughs> so in today's episode, we are going to be reviewing Scooby Doo Two Monsters Unleashed. Yeah, so yeah, JB, yeah, do you yeah. want to throw in your fun fact now about the title, or what? What fun fact? Wait, do I have what it was fun? originally called? Going to be called or something? Oh well, okay. Well, because of I don't know if Smash heard the last the last review. It was a bit chaotic, but throughout that one, because we're doing so many interviews related to that, I was kind of just dropping some fun facts. Again, you should really watch all like the full interviews, people listening. But I guess the fact from this is from Minor Forty Nine that it was originally called Scooby Two. And that's it. I don't know why Millie wanted me to share that. I thought you said it was called Unleashed. Well, no, James Gunn wanted it to be called Scooby Doo 2 Unleashed. But I don't know what he was thinking. Because Monsters Unleashed, for all it's not the greatest title in the world, Scooby Doo 2 Unleashed wouldn't have made sense. What's Unleashed? Scooby is Unleashed? What was he before? Oh, well, I don't think down. they were. I don't think they were going to have the two. I think it was just going to be Scooby Doo Unleashed. The Scooby Doo, the movie, and then Scooby Doo Unleashed. Hmm. <laughs> Oh, oh! Unleashed off his collar? Or yeah, because that's a leash, isn't it? So yeah. Been free, maybe. Ooh. <laughs> there was a really fun, like, facial expression that kind of showed JB's processing. Yeah, of, like, I unleashed in his mind. because he's <laughs> unleashed. Because the monsters doesn't need, don't need to be unleashed. Because for all they are unleashed, Scooby is the one that has a leash. JB, it's okay. We all got it five leashes Holy ago. Holy hell! <laughs> That's actually changed my perspective <laughs> on the movie. Well, well done, James Gunn. Maybe James Gunn can call Guardians of the Galaxy uh, the Galaxy Free Unleashed because Rocket is an animal, and sometimes you put animals on leashes. Oh no! We should do it. Okay, so this is where we give an overview of the movie for those of you who haven't seen it for a while. JB, you feel like doing an overview? Maybe Smash can do the overview because this is his baby. <laughs> this is Smash's baby. <laughs> This is my baby. I've oh, watched baby. it a million and a half times, probably literally too. Well, do you want to do the overview? Because I think I'd be excited to hear this. Do you want it short or? <laughs> no. Well, let's let's have it nice. Let's have a nice long one from you today. All right. Once upon a time, there's a beautiful sky view of the night. I'm in Vancouver. <laughs> Anyways, let's get into this movie. So, Scooby Doo 2, Monsters Unleashed. We see the gang are now very successful. They have their own clubhouse headquarters. And they are now entering the grand opening of their Coulsonian Criminology Museum for Coolsville. So what this museum entails is it has all the costumes of the villains that they have unmasked in the past, as Fred says. But, of course, opening night wouldn't be complete without a mystery. So, um, as soon as everything seems fine and dandy, um, we get a great thunder and lightning storm to welcome our main villain of the movie, the evil mass figure. But he also has some little friends and he wants more. So he comes with a pterodactyl ghost. The pterodactyl ghost costume has come to life and is stealing more costumes from the museum. So the gang has to figure out why, who is this evil mass figure, how did he do this, and what's going to happen if he makes more monsters. So they do some investigating, they think maybe it's the original Black Knight ghost, which is Jeremiah Wickles. They think, could it be the original pterodactyl ghost, Jonathan Jacobo? But unfortunately, he actually died trying to um, escape from prison. So they continue their investigation, but sadly, Scooby and Shaggy are feeling very down because they are realizing that they're just screw-ups, and they don't actually do anything in Mystery Incorporated. 
So they are ready to prove their worth and solve this entire mystery on their own. But in the process, they end up being the ones that create the rest of the monsters from the costumes. So, after a fun little tune from Scooby and Shaggy, monsters are running rampage around Coolsville, and the gang have to stop them and figure out who they, who did all this in the very beginning, and yeah, there's there's my overview. That was a really good overview. Thank I you. guess also we should probably put a great deal more on top of Smash now because we kind of had like a little piece about each member of the cast in the last one. But obviously Smash wasn't there for that. So I guess do you have anything to say, Smash, about any of the cast members? Like one that you like the most, one that you think is not great, like. What's your opinion on Gala, Lillard, Cardellini, Prinz, and Fanning? So, I have to say, definitely, um, Lillard and Cardellini, from the Mystery Inc. aspect of it, are, like, the epitome of Shaggy and Velma. You know, like, they are just them. Um, Sarah Michelle Gellar, great Daphne, I think... Uh, she's a lot more of a Daphne in this one. Um, we also get to see her kick butt with the Black Knight. Um, Fred, I feel like, unfortunately, in both movies, he's just kind of like the dumb blonde that's there. Who's like, I'm macho. You know, I got muscle. Look at me. Um, he does have a little arc in this movie. It's not huge, but, you know, <laughs> he's there. Hmm. No, I like that. That's kind of that's kind of fair as well. And we were kind of saying in the last in the last one that with Matthew Lillard, he continues to be Shaggy to this day, and he's fantastic. The day Matthew Lillard decides to retire from Shaggy, it, it might be the day that I give up. You know, it might be the day that I hang up the magic carpet and and retire. That might be it. So Millie might have to do this without me. Are you still watching the Arabian Nights movie, JB? No, I'm not watching any movie. Um, but again, Linda Cardellini, such a good Velma that she's brainwashed a generation of kids nowadays, like Kate McCoochie, oh, yeah. the sexy Velma. <laughs> That's how good Linda Cardellini was 20 years ago. So praise Linda Cardellini. Okay, and that's, that's JV's final opinion of the episode. <laughs> so let's start working through the plot and what we all thought of it. So we have the intro, which is oh. the moon, which I feel like is just... Especially for the live action Scooby movies, it's just it is it's. I'm got a bit to be there. upset though because this this music is amazing. The fact that it just kind of eases you into it like that. <laughs> and then the titles, <laughs> and the fact that David Newman doesn't remember it, and that piece is a masterpiece. How do you compose that and not remember it? If I compose that. I would have it tattooed I need a on my rendition forehead. For oh, it's I need so an good. entire rendition for I'll me. I'll do it, actually. Maybe maybe one day, if we become desperate enough, we'll open up a Patreon and it'll just be me singing. <laughs> well, I think people would probably pay <laughs> to cancel that. Which... I feel that. <laughs> but yeah. Okay, so we have the moon, the pterodactyl flying past that, and then the kind of creepy green writing which is almost echoed in the yeah. footprints and things later on as well. Well it's the randomonium isn't yeah, it? Yeah it's the ingredient. I get like really spooky vibes from it I don't know why like I feel like I'm it's Halloween and I'm watching a movie like Hocus Pocus. It this is a bit good. sad though True. because there is one interview that we've done that I'm not going to talk about in this. Because you've not announced it yet. Because Yeah, but it's so prominent throughout the movie that maybe we'll recover this again if we're still doing stuff in two years and it's the 20th anniversary of this movie. Which will make me feel old, because I remember playing the game of this film as a kid, but I guess, Rihanna, what is your opinion on the kind of intro, the opening credits, the pterodactyl ghost? The credits, the, the music, everything just gives me chills and I think this is something that I really do like compared to you know the other live action versions of Scooby which we'll get into when we cover them but it just feels like you're going into a Scooby movie you know from the cartoon movies to you know the live actions I feel like this is something that has been done really well because we always have like for specific movies and iconic kind of 
intro soundtrack you know things like that and how it just eases into the movie starting and this it just captivates me from the get-go and I always get little like goosebumps all over because it's like oh gosh Mm -hmm. I know it's gonna happen but it's so spooky See, it's funny right. you mentioned the other versions of Scooby Doo because I think when looking at things as a retrospective, I think it's the Mystery Begins is the only one that doesn't start with the moon as a shot. Like I think the first one starts with the moon, then this one, and I think um, yeah, the Lake Monster starts. Lake with Monster the moon. does too. Yeah. But initially, I thought it was a Raja Gosnell thing because we watched the Smurfs relatively recently, and that starts with the moon as yeah, well. Yeah, that's true. But no, so they carry on in Lake Monster. It's just the mystery begins. But oh, this intro. I mean, I, I feel like Smash. You're gonna have fun talking about the intro. What do you think about? I guess the titles, music, and the pterodactyl ghost. So this was the first move Scooby movie. That I saw in theaters. Um, I, I like begged my parents to take me to see this movie. And then my brother surprised me with tickets to with uh, for my siblings and stuff to go see it. And like, although I don't totally remember like watching the whole movie in the theater, you know, I just remember bits and pieces of this. Like this opening shot is one that I really remember, and it I mean, at this point, the opening shot and the music and stuff is like, you know, the, the opening credits are like nostalgia, but um, I, I actually have this movie's like uh, orchestra score, you know, the whole like score of the film on like added to my music library. And I'm pretty sure this is one of my most listened to songs just in my music library in general, because I love this opening song. It feels Scooby, it, it, like you said, JB, it eases you into it. So, like, as it starts out, you know, it's kind of calmer. And then as things ramp up, it gets faster and more chaotic and stuff until the kind of the send-off, you know, right at the end of the opening credits. Then it's like, you're into the story now. Here you go. And I think, too, I really liked that it followed the pterodactyl ghost and, like, I mean, at this point, with how many times we've all seen it, you know, we know what that is. But I think when you were to very first watch it, you were like, what the heck was that? And now it's gone, you know, like it just went into the drains or something. Um, So I think that was really cool. I don't think I remember the first time I watched this, you know. It's funny you mentioned it because I I can't even think about what my mind was even feeling when I was first seeing to watch this. In fact, I might have even watched this one before the first one. But I don't know. What about Millie? What do you think about the intro? Like I say, I think it's really good. I like I say, I almost got like a Halloween vibe. I felt like I was about to sit and watch Hocus Pocus. It was, you know, because <laughs> like like Smash was saying, the first time you see the pterodactyl ghost, you're almost like, oh, what was that? Almost like, you know, in a Halloween movie, you'd think it was a witch that was going to be flying past the moon or something. And I was trying to watch it like it was the first time I'd watched it as well because mm, yeah. I think this is one that. I've not watched so much like growing up I had the first live action movie on DVD and I had the witch's ghost on DVD and that was it so this one and obviously JB let's be honest 100% favors the first live action movie so if we're watching a (laughs) live action Scooby they're like okay we're putting 2002 on so I honestly feel like I could almost count on one hand the amount of times I'd in this so quite fresh really really A lot of people listening to this are going to feel so sorry for my parents when I tell this anecdote. Oh, no. But I used to be able to do the perfect, like, an, uh, the perfect impression of the scream of the pterodactyl ghost when I was little. Like, it sounded like I had it on, like, not recording, but it was on one of those little things. Like, it looked like what Kevin McAllister used like, in the second. It was like was a playback a thing. thing. My dad used it for his, like, medical stuff. And I, like, stole one and tried to get the screen. And I just used to run around as a kid doing the tear it out to go screen. I think it's why my so parents wanted to put me up for adoption. JV? Me? Yeah. I love it a lot, you know. Obviously, like Millie was saying, I am more of a first live action movie thing. And this was so different. So instantly, I'm kind of comparing the two. And I think about the first one you kind of get a bit more of a of a different vibe. You've got the kind of scooby dooby doo where are you? And then you just it just it just chucks you into the action. There's a butt shot of Daphne. 
where I was there. I knew that was going to happen. It was like a slow burn almost. Like it kind of builds suspense. You kind of get reassured in a way that it's the same cast returning. You know, you've got Matthew Lillard and Dakota Lini, and then you're like, oh, look, there's Seth Green. And then it takes you on that amazing tour, which I think it's probably, like, in terms of the titles, maybe a better one? No? Because it's definitely better music. Because I think I much prefer the instrumental. At least at the start. And I thought it was good, you know. Um, I like how they did it where some of the names kind of got crushed. I think it was masterfully done, especially for how old the movie is. But yeah, well, yeah, no complaints from me. I'm a happy bunny. Okay, so again, the start of the movie, I think we need to talk about the limo with the Mr. Mission oh, pattern. Oh gosh, what? I, mean, I want to find, I want to ask someone what happened to that. Because I can only assume they maybe rented one to like repaint and then perhaps to like because they didn't want to buy it and then scrap it or try and sell almost it just on. like films that went yeah. around the edges of it that could be taken back off which is sad but i oh a part of me is like i want to believe that this like some like rich collector has that somewhere but i doubt it i really doubt it what about you millie what do you think of the limo i loved it it was it was like one of those things you see as a kid and you're like, I want that. That's the dream. My kind of issue is, is that a lot of people, who was it that um, Minor 49 was on? Was it Nerd Sync did a video saying that the first movie should have been the second one and this should have been the first one? I right, can't yeah. see that. But at the same time, I think it could have worked in the way we got it. But I almost feel like this should have been the third one. And we we're almost missing a chapter Bro. between the first and second because we see that mystery inc are reunited and they're successful but then it's kind of like where does the hey where does the hq come in where does it get to the point where they've unmasked that many people that like there's not only a museum but they're also like like celebrity royalty because we never really got that from from the first movie and even we'll probably discuss this further on but i think that the hq for all it looks amazing it definitely looks like they've just got it new. Because if that was commissioned at the same time as the Mystery Machine, I feel like it would be a lot more like, you know, like, like in Alien Invaders, Shaggy's version of Crystal and Amber's house, it would have been full of lava lamps and those beaded curtains, you know, it would have been a bit like 1969 <laughs> Paradise. So I, I do feel like we've almost missed a section in between, but... I think what you say, the HQ is a conversation that's going to be had, and I think we can all agree unanimously that being in the Scooby limo was probably like a childhood dream. But that's also followed by the gang arriving and them all having their individual fan groups. Smash, did you have a favourite fan group? And what did you think to the others? Well, I guess what, what group do you think you'd be in as well? That's a good question, actually. Um... Like trying to remember them all, cause I I don't feel like I'd be as boisterous in like as Velma's posse, but I also don't think I would really associate with Shaggy's posse either. I feel like I'd be a mix between those two. Mm, I mean, there's no secret as to which group jb would be i think he would get over his fear of needles and be a daphne tattooed fan himself oh i would be yeah well, actually no because then no one would know who it was because daphne would look brown <laughs> Rihanna, which was your favorite fan group i think see i'm very much torn because i loved like I, I love individual things about each of them. I love how, you know, Fred passed out, like, the ascots, things like that. I, I will admit, I, I can't quite remember if if anyone... But, like, I feel like one of them should have been holding his book that was mentioned in the first movie. That would have been oh. a little yeah. to sneak in. Oh, um, yeah. But I think... I preferred Scooby's one because... Yeah, I was thinking that. Amazing. We should just take Tatty and join Scooby's fan group. Yeah. True. I'll just be there, like, I'll put dog ears on and I'll just be like, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a make-believe dog right now. I, I identify as a dog for a short period of time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're so pure. 
we could do that. I, I see that being possible. And especially with like, you know, sign my bowl and stuff, tug my chew toy. They're kind of getting a bit of funny jokes in there. But I really like the scene. And I think one day we are all collectively going to go to some of the filming locations of these. Because this is like an actual museum, isn't it? Like, it is. We should go. Yes. I think I heard somewhere that when they were filming for this, you could like rock up and you could be in like, like an extra in the crowd. But I don't know. Like, how old were we when this came out? I think I was maybe like I was six. Maybe Smash was seven. Rihanna was like not born. And two, we're like the youngest. Two, I was two. You were two. How do you work no. out that she was born the year of the last movie and wasn't born for this one? I thought she was two now. She's like a little cute one. <laughs> you thought she was two now. Jamie well, thinks I'm wearing a baby grow right now. We are the young blood, really, though, aren't no. we? The rest of the community is old. I feel like I almost want to say what you said about the artwork today, but that I think that was maybe an after-recording comment. For the... Oh, are we spoiling stuff? Yeah, exactly. I still have this well, conversation well, afterwards. Well, we'll mention it so we can, I can chop it up and it'll be an, a little short at some point on the Okay, so you know what I'm telling the story now? Well, you can tell the story now. You know, like, JB is working on some artwork for when we do the series. Well, it's Space Looks. Credit to Space Looks. Link in the description. Right. Yeah, continue. With yeah. That. We were talking about what artwork we'd be having for every series. And for a pup named Scooby-Doo, he was like, I just don't know what to do. I was like, what do you mean? He was like, well, Rihanna's already a baby, so we can't make a baby a baby. Like... Someone's going to have to be pregnant, because that's just the well, next no, stage back for me, isn't it? I was thinking, I was thinking like, no, as visual, I want to make it very faithful to what we have now. We make the Smash Up Pass studio that's in this visual, like a little playground. So we have the artwork more or less the same for the walls, but instead of a desk, we have like little baby toys, you have high chairs, prams, and we have baby versions of all of us. But I was going to maybe put, put, like, put myself as Dr. Vindaloo almost, like a baby Dr. Vindaloo. Oh, and I was going to hold an ultrasound scanner up to Millie's belly and Rihanna would be on the monitor. Because she's so young now, if we were all Jamie! babyfied, <laughs> she would be a fetus. Oh I'm, oh, I'm 20. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm only like four years younger than you, baby. Like, this is art. It's up to interpretation. You're saying that I'm three your three years younger than you. She, he interpreter, to interpreter, wow, interprets you as a baby. Oh my god. I, I just can't believe it. I was literally just like stood in the kitchen making his lunch. And he was like, you're going to have to be pregnant. I was like, what do you mean? And he was like, oh, I'm just talking about artwork. I was like, again, what do you mean? And he was like, I was just thinking, a pup named Scooby-Doo. We can't age Rihanna backwards. I was like, you just don't make sense. <laughs> but is that oh ages God. away, really? Because obviously, by the time we're recording, like if all of us are still doing this, if someone's, you know what I mean, like it, multiple things could change. And obviously, Rihanna will be a bit older by then, so maybe she will be like a little baby one. Oh my gosh! But yeah, it's like, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'm a slow age I'm. I'm born on a leap year. I want to try and commission artwork for every different series that we have to do. Apart from, aren't there some that are like ridiculously this, like the same? Like, well, there's some that are the same that I'm just not going to change it. But other ones I am. Like, I'm dying to see how we all look in the Be Cool style. Hey. I think that would be awesome. <laughs> what do you think I look like, Millie? Amazing. Like, the new artwork, when we start the first series, I think they've interpreted you the best. But that's a pilot, you know, that's a pilot series. That's a pilot series, because I'm not sure yet. It's but a we'll pilot see. picture. It's a pilot, it's a pilot. But yeah, let's get back on topic, because for all we do love to go on our tangents today, if this is your first episode, we do apologise. But this is a very conversational tone. It's my goal that if you feel like you're sat in a room talking to your best friends about the movie, then that's a good day for me. If you don't like tangents, then piss off. <laughs> Unfortunately for us, we're all stuck with JB, so we can't be sat with our best friends. No, that actually hurt me. No, that actually, no, that hurt. I'm kidding, JB. Can someone make a rebuttal? JB. JB. You're beautiful. Okay. You are. 
Okay, so we have talked about fan groups. I guess at this point it's kind of an exciting point we, of we the movie. Do you want to mention Peter New? Us in terms of interviews. Because, like, it's when we see the Daphne Tattooed fan who we've been able to speak with. And Daphne Tattooed fan had a reunion yesterday, I think, with Grey Delisle. Ooh. So yeah. that was awesome to see. And not only that, but we also see Ned for the first time. Which doesn't Ned! look like Ned. Ned now. Yeah, oh my god. You Maybe guys, Ned. if you haven't seen the Ned interview, his, his real name is Zaf Poru on the channel, please go and see that. That man has had a glow up. Oh my gosh, that was such a fun interview. Because when he entered, I was like, oh my god, I want this to be my biological dad. This is like Indian goals. This is Indian supremacy. I want to be this guy. This guy is like the leader of the Indians. I want to learn how to get like this. He's a great guy. I love him. And you missed it, Millie. I'm sorry. But it, we missed you. We missed you. But yeah, the Ned interview. Please check it out. I like how JV replaced me with that interview as well. He twisted the laptop so he had his Gala poster <laughs> next to him. So, <laughs> yeah. happened. She's here. Oh, no. That means you're his Daphne. Exactly. That's yeah. what I was about to say. Yeah, and you don't always get kidnapped. Thank you. Okay. Less work for JV. <laughs> yeah. I'd save you, though, if you got kidnapped. I would. I believe you. Yeah, well, you should believe me, because I would. You should um, test it, Millie. <laughs> yeah, just run away for the day, like, JV, help me. So I'm is, stuck, help. What is everyone's opinion of the gang of the gang's fits in this scene? Fits? Yeah, like their outfits. Okay. Why does Shaggy look like a drug? <laughs> <laughs> I think... I think this is... Um, I, I'm I'm starting to agree with JV on the Linda Cardellini front here. It's like Velma done right, and the only time it ever was. Like, well, I'd argue she's Mindy Kerr. such a good Velma, and like and the outfit Ward. and everything. It almost looked like a shirt style at the top, like mm. smart formal Velma, and then they just did this like long flowing skirt with it, which again made it kind of a more formal aspect. But like very businessy at the same time, it was perfect, honestly. And JV's either going to agree with me or hit me for this, so like I'm like edging hit away. You. But like Daphne was the worst. Why are you bro yes. broadcasting that out? Why don't it hit you? That's no, ridiculous. but like the one standing up against Gally, you're not going to like it, <laughs> are you? Like <laughs> I'm thinking of like as a, as a man, as a man, if you identify as a male. Substance. You you shouldn't hit people that identify as a female because it's not oh, right. Yeah, that's that's okay. my mission. If you're a guy listening to this, please don't hit women. So I'm responsible. Please don't hit audience. anybody. Well, if a guy, if you're a guy and a guy is oh. winding you up, just you, you knock him one. Or unless you're Will Smith and you're doing it in front of a large impressionable audience, <laughs> if you think you can get away with it, maybe try it. Oh gosh. But only okay. if you deserve it. Okay, JB, back on topic. Okay. That was a joke, by the way. Good. So come on, yeah, come on. Um, Daphne's Daphne... outfit's horrible. Like, if you think about how... You know, like, when there's a cartoon Scooby movie, and I think the one that's standing out to me at the minute is the Gourmet Ghost movie. Because there's a scene in that where they all get formal outfits and they yeah. all look incredible. Yeah. It's the best. Even Fred's ever looked. I think Daphne and Velma looked really nice there too. Like even Lego Daphne at the end of the stage, the haunted Hollywood yeah. movie looks pretty pain. Like Daphne looks like she's wearing a purple mop as a jacket. It's just got all these like weird little. Uh, uh, she just looks terrible. Like normally it would just be like I don't know. Like Velma just gets a dress and it it's nice. It works. Whereas I feel like they could have just done the same. Like given Daphne a really nice pink dress and a uh, pink dress purple dress and then like they just throw this jacket over it that just makes it look strange and, um... okay i'm gonna be honest like because after the pterodactyl attacks you know and they're kind of like investigating whatever i honestly think daphne looks better in that scene after she's yes. kind of like stripped down a little bit i'm like you should have just went with that girl like, I don't know if there was something like she felt like she was made too skimpy in the first movie, so it's like, now let's go the reverse. Really? Let's dress me like I'm in the Antarctic. 
But I, yeah, the outfit in the museum scene <laughs> was ridiculous. And I guess the Daphne part about it, like I think where I feel like Daphne's wardrobe maybe isn't exactly spot on is probably the mystery begins, but then they fix it in Lake Monster. But this, I think, is probably the worst Daphne outfit. Well, oh, she just wears so many ridiculous things in this movie. This one being the first offender of many. Yeah, JB, it's going to be a common theme, I think, through this review, is that JB doesn't like what Daphne wears. Like, he doesn't like this one. He doesn't like the one where she's wearing a poncho. Oh, no. He doesn't like it when she's wearing the, like, purple body warmer with sunshines on it. <laughs> He's just, just not a fan of the Daphne looks today, are you, Jamie? Well, no, because I think Daphne's the fashionable one, so whenever they're not looking on fleek, it's like, well, that's not Daphne. I'd go as far as to say that JB prefers the Velma outfits for this movie because you said that Daphne yes. should have been given one of Velma's outfits. Yeah. But that's, the th that's actually a and meme. That's, that's a meme. We'll get to it. But it's like, <laughs> it, it, it's, it's a meme because there's the whole thing of when Daphne is trying to make Velma look a bit sexy for Patrick and so she gives her the, the, like, the orange latex thing, or maybe it's red, I think it's orange, it's almost like, okay, if that's not Velma's and you only ever see Daphne in pink or purple... Where did that come from? Yeah, so she either had that especially for Velma or she just is ridiculously off-brand and it happens to fit Velma. So there's that kind of weird thing there, but I'm just, yeah, I'm not there for this. And it isn't practical either. Like, when she's trying to fight the pterodactyl goose, when she's, like, running to, like, help tie the rope and stuff, she's just waddling not like a penguin. Not only that, but, like, it's almost like they tried to give her this fashionable moment. Like, I think, you know when she's wearing that short skirt and heels? Mm. And then they arrive at the treehouse and somehow she's got a spare change of clothes there, even though they've not been there for what appears to be a few years. She yeah. still has clean clothes there and can get changed, yet the rest of the gang don't. But yeah, this outfit's but it's ridiculous. Because it she ridiculous. needs to be able to fight a ghost, so they have to put her back into trousers, but... That being said, yeah. the one thing I will say about this outfit is I wish that they experimented more with the branding of the movie and that... I think for the Peaceworks cards from Inkworks, you can get free of the kind of sexy outfit and then free of the almost cargo pants, the you know, the ones that she wears when fighting the 10,000 volt goes. I do wish that maybe they'd made that into a Peaceworks, the kind of fluffiness, but I don't know, that's just branding, marketing, merchandise. Not really relevant. <laughs> relevant. I mean, Rihanna, what did you think of the outfit? <laughs> So for me, you know Big Bird. Daphne oh. looked like a purple Big Bird. It, like, I don't understand. I mean, I, I look at things like the Met Gala, the Oscars, and I'm like, do you even step out of your house wearing that, let alone in front of thousands and millions of people watching, you know? And that was just kind of that, that moment. I think... Out of all of them, and I may be a bit biased, but Scooby Doo, his outfit's perfect. That little bow tie. Oh, yeah, it was really cute. It's so cute. And, and, like, I think out of all of them, though, Fred was the better looking male with his yeah. outfit. Like, he didn't look like he'd rolled around in mud. And Velma's was the better, like, yeah. female with his Yeah. It was, and it all just flowed and I want to dress like that and you know Aww. it's practical and it kind of matches Velma's style as well where it's very much okay business but you know can look good at times as well yeah I'd agree with that as Brad with the best male and Velma is the best female and do you know what like back on the Daphne topic JB even was saying that he doesn't like her hair as much in this one, which no, is interesting. No, it's surprising, though, because, because this it's her hair. This is Sarah Michelle Gellar. What? Well, interrupt me if you want to. You interrupted me. I'm the Daphne expert. So, in the last movie, she had to wear a wig because of her Buffy contract that she couldn't dye her hair away from blonde. But in this one, the Buffy contract was over, so she had to dye her hair for the role. So it's a natural hair, and JB was like, I really don't like it as much. But it's almost like... They overdo everything for Daphne in this. Like, they overdo the outfit with the huge, stupid jacket. And they almost overdo the hair as well. Like, it, it, like it's kind of like they've tried to, like, feather it and, like, volumize it. And it just looks like it's floating. It's 
odd. I doubt like Sam Chagall has amazing hair. And in Buffy you can see that. But here, I don't know. I don't know. It's just the wig did it for me. The wig did it for me. This is fine. It's nice. It's sweet. But it's just... I'm not getting the vibe. It's also lighter. It's not on as much of a Daphne colour. What's like, what is he called? Strawberry blonde? Is that? It's place? definitely got the more blonde yeah. tinge to it, doesn't it? Yeah. But I guess let's, let's, um, let's address, okay. let's address this, this interesting character. I would like to know everybody's opinion on Seth Green as Patrick. And I'll start with Doodlebugsy. Hey, okay. um, he gave me very, like, I am not going to lie, I was very suspicious of him. And I was like, okay, you're a cool character, possibly trying a little bit too hard. Like, I loved his, like, entrance, though, with one where it was, like, slow motion and mm -hmm. he slipped down. He's like, oh, yeah, no, I'm fine. I promise I'm fine. And fun little fact for those of you who don't follow like WWE and wrestling, Sarah Michelle Gellar, Freddie Prince Jr., and Seth Green like reunited at Alexa Bliss's wedding, mm. and it was such a going back because um there was something about what they were wearing that reminded me of this movie so much, but it was that that scene like him being introduced and I think what's nice is that we're seeing Velma like someone who kind of is very similar with her is very practical in thinking but has many layers that we are yet to uncover, which we do later on in this movie. So he was definitely an interesting character when I first saw him. And now I just laugh every time I see him because all I can imagine is someone slowly walking up to me, falling, and then he's <laughs> fine, I promise. And there was like a slightly edgy joke and when he does that, someone in the background makes like the drunk gesture, like the gesture of like drinking, like, oh, look at him, he's had too much to drink. So <laughs> a little subtle adult-ish joke there, but I guess... Moving on, Millie, what's your opinion on Mr. Patrick? Okay, so I think it's really cool that they brought Seth Green because as well they just finished filming, uh, the Buffy had just finished filming and they were in that, so it's kind of like a reuniting yeah. with Gala there. Um, but the character, I really, really like them. I think the actor was the perfect match for Velma, especially since, like, you know in the last movie they just kind of paired with the first guy they found on set? <laughs> yeah. it was baffling like yes, this guy was... serving the coffee grab him yeah just like <laughs> oh no we need a guy for Valma just get that one off the street they'll have to do sit them there Jeez. and tell them that's the line oh no like, she can't be with Daphne grab a no. guy <laughs> like the casting for that didn't make any sense it was kind of like why is it them what makes them right for Valma whereas I feel like the second Patrick enters the room it's like yep okay that's the one that's perfect like it makes sense. It was, I think it was really, really good casting. Um, also though, like, I don't know if they got somebody else to do his voice. You know when Shaggy and Scooby find them outside the faux ghost? Oh no, I think Their voice is that deep, I didn't think they'd be capable of it to look at them. He's a werewolf. But they act really well, like, they go from being quite suspicious to quite humorous. I don't know, like, I'd say say and this is something that i really don't like and i think it's why i don't watch this movie because for anyone who's followed this smash up past series you'll know i don't like velma but yes. in this movie velma and patrick is my favorite characterizations Aww. like seeing them two together it works i genuinely really do enjoy it hmm i like that that's a pretty good take maybe radical radically different to my take but i guess first we can hear from the one and only smash about Patrick. About um, Patrick wisely and That's their right. relationship to Velma. Just Patrick in general. All Patrick. I'm sorry. I... Okay. Patrick. <laughs> the I... One. He's the one. <laughs> he... <laughs> so, I definitely was suspicious of him too. I was like, mm, you're getting awful close to Velma, aren't you? And right off the bat. And... Um, but I honestly, too, like, if if they, well, okay, I have, like, two ships with Velma of, like, who, it's either one or the other. If she can't have one, she gets the other, you know, in the end. I'm, like, either with Marcy from Mystery Incorporated, or if she can't be with a girl, then give her Patrick and leave her with Patrick. Like, I don't know. I really like them together. And I love the characterizations because, like, 
you know, we had the um, other guy, his name's slipping my mind right now, from Phantasaur, and I was like, oh, why Windsor. are you... Windsor, yeah, why are we going on dates with our twin, our identical brother? Like, I was like, that, I mean, but I feel like this is a better representation of, like, another type of, you know, smart, intelligent, um, kind of awkwardly, you know, socially, socially awkward and stuff. Um, plus, their heights seem to be on par. I don't know, I just, I, I really like them together. And Patrick, again, as a character, I think he did really well of, like, um, you know, Seth Green doing really well of being the likable character for Velma, but also being, like, a suspicious, like, you know, you're constantly like, oh, yay, they're together. Oh, but do I trust you? Oh, yay, they're together. But do I trust you? Yeah, I get that. Like, oh, the scene where he's like, oh, take my hand. I'm like, I don't know. I just really, yeah. really like them. But like you say, there's also some times when you're like, don't do it. You're the bad guy, <laughs> maybe, possibly, I think. <laughs> Hmm. So JB, you said that you had an interesting take. Yeah, again, I'm probably just simping for the first movie a bit, but I I don't know. I just feel like this is another byproduct of the the Karens that saw the test screening for the first <laughs> movie. It, oh, no way. It's Daphne and Velma kissing. Well, in Bible, you know, chapter Matthew, version 15 says it, it said Velma shall not lie with Daphne. It, like, like, piss off, man. Like, <laughs> and then, and then, obviously, they had to change it. You know, poor Kent Bader had to sweat like a like like a guy just just trying to edit everything out. The poor man. And then we got the movie, which I do love. Yeah, so maybe the Karens were right. Maybe, maybe. But I, I don't get how this is like. Okay, if they didn't need to change the first movie, then we would have got a different sequel. And I don't think that sequel would have involved Patrick if everything was left in. And so to me, it's kind of like maybe James Gunn had finished this script and they'd gone, let's make Patrick more romantic towards Velma because we need to reassure the test screening this time. We're not trying to do the same thing. And so I'm kind of just seeing it as more like a, another way to just appease to these people that just showed up to the screening of the first movie with holy water and water pistols ready to spray the screen at the first sign of any discretion. What I'd <laughs> say is it's a necessary distraction from Fred's mess. I'll say, because... thank God it's played by Seth Green. Yeah. He's such a likeable person that I think if it was played by someone unlikable, maybe I'd be a bit more annoyed. What I'd say is that it's kind of a necessary thing because at the last end of the first movie, Everyone had got behind Fred and Daphne. Like, Fred was this reformed character who wasn't taking credit for everything. And then literally the start of this movie, backtrack to square one. Fred's doing the interviews. Everyone else is more, like, interested in the people that's there to support them, stuff like that. Whereas Fred's like, me, 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 me. And so it's kind of like just having Velma do something that attracts attention is like great we've had a lot of fred I, I couldn't care who it was i'm just happy that it's someone that's not him yeah and it's so well i think this has set a trend and i think a lot of what works in this movie and again someone needs to shut me up about the first movie but also in the first movie is yeah, there's some good stuff that i think has been taken too far nowadays so I love that Scrappy's the villain in the first one because it stood out to me as a kid. It was so weird, so unexpected. But now fast forward, the fact that Warner Brothers keep crapping on Scrappy at every opportunity, I'm like, it's kind of getting a bit old now. If you want to retire the character, retire them. You don't need to keep on making these jokes every time you get, like, What's a you scrappy? know, like that. Either leave him out or redeem him or just, just stop because it's not funny anymore. That's the thing. It just well, isn't funny. Okay, to add on to this tangent, you know what bugs me is that they they make that joke in Curse of the 13th Ghost of what's a Scrappy, and yet they throw him in as a cameo in Scooby Natural, and I'm like, what was the point? Yeah, they know that there's some fandom behind them. Like, I'm not the biggest Scrappy fan, but 
I would rather see Scrappy be redeemed now rather than these ridiculous jokes at every opportunity. But again, like with this, I think people are always like, oh, well, Velma always, is always a nerd. She's lonely. She's antisocial. No, no guy's ever interested in her. And I think now that's become so untrue because like in Camp Scare or... Oh, we were watching an episode of What's New where it was like a medieval episode where the prince is like, ah, oh, fair maiden, come here. I think it's become more common now that a character will try and be with Velma than be with Daphne. And this is, I love it in this movie, but I think it's then gone on to set what I'm sick of now after reviewing all the movies that I've reviewed. But This is a standalone movie. It's got its own roles because it is I feel like... There's a lot of movies where Fred's like got another woman that he's speaking to and stuff. And I think if that happened when Daphne was played by Sarah Michelle Geller, you'd be petitioning like getting studios closed down and having an absolute outrage well, actually, when... that anybody could write that Freddie Prince Jr. was going to act in that array around like Gala. You'd just. When I did see this movie for the first time, I thought that that's what they were trying to do. Or at least in the an early time, I thought that that's what they were trying to do with Heather Jasper Hall. Yeah, you're right. I don't know. I think this is definitely a standalone movie, and I think when Should watching just this, Scooby Doo Monsters Unleashed. Yeah, I just need to shut the first movie out of my head entirely because it really isn't a sequel to that movie. Like, there's no reference to it. Where, what happened to Mary Jane? No one knows. No one cares. <laughs> what happened to Scrappy? No one knows. No one cares. Like. And it's almost like they didn't even stick the Lunar Ghost costume in this museum sequence yeah. in the background. Okay. I would have really liked just that subtle hint. So moving things forward, and JB kind of mentioned there, the museum and the costumes. Smash, what did you think to the museum? Can I please just live there? <laughs> like, I, ever since I've seen this, I have had this, like, fantasy of getting my own space that's big enough and like doing that like making these yeah. really good looking costumes of all these scooby villains and like having an exhibit like that and actually letting people come through and look and i think it'd be really cool i don't know if i'd do it all the time or if it'd be kind of like a halloween special or just like occasional but i think it'd be really cool to like have some people um get in the costumes and like kind of walk around and kind of tease the guests, you know, like, oh, wait, is it alive? I thought you were over there a second out, you know. I mean, I've always oh. had this idea, so I love, love this museum, and I want one of my own. Can I just go buy this museum? Well, I wish we could have, like, I wish that they just opened it up as an attraction, because I think in the bonus features of this, it's like a, a, a section called Triple Threat, and you get to see yeah. Bilbo is walking around this museum saying, look at these plaques, they're all accurate to the yeah. monsters from the show. And it's like, why was there not like an art, ga like a photo gallery section just zooming in on the plaques? Because that would have been so right? cool. Like, oh my gosh, I wish that we could have seen this. And there's so many, like you've got the space kook, werewolf, uh, obviously the ones that we see, 10,000 volt ghosts. But even if you just play the video game for this movie, you almost uncover a whole entire world where the witch doctor would have been involved. You know, weird pumpkin creature. Like, oh, I think there's almost more of a budgeting issue, which is why this movie didn't get made how it maybe should have. But I mm -hmm. think there's almost another version of this movie, like the Gosnell cut of the first movie, but they never shot it. And I'm sad. Rihanna, did you like the museum? I did. The only thing that kind of upsets me, but I'm gl glad that like on the DVD's bonus features and stuff, we can see the concept art. And, you know, we we would have had ghosts like Redbeard's ghost, the Creeper, Ghost Clown, Headless Horseman. It would have been so cool to see. And actually, um, what, what I think is quite cool, I have this little holographic thing with Velma on it but then when you turn it the other way you see the pumpkin ghost thingy and it's seeing that up close the attention to detail in those costumes are so cool and JB I know you mentioned something about like how this um, movie must have like a Gosnell cut kind of thing I did find out earlier today that the 
video version has been re-edited slightly because there were some comical drug references which parents were just like oh no that's way too explicit for you know the movie so there are things that we don't know that were cut from the second movie Hmm. Yeah. It sounds to me so, like it's time for another chat with Ken Bader. Yeah. I, <laughs> you know, I had seen this one on the big screen originally, and I, not very vividly, but I do remember a handful of scenes that when I bought it on, uh, originally on VHS, I was like, why does this feel ever so slightly different? And then as I got older and did research, I was like, I knew there were scenes missing. They cut it after people made comments of seeing it and being like, eh, it's too much. And there's even some, some of the scenes that um, were cut are in some of the original trailers that you can watch on YouTube. Like um, one of the funny ones to me, uh, I got every, I can't remember now exactly what said, but it's when, you know, Shaggy and Scooby are like, you know, let's split up and search for clues. And Fred's like, you stole the thing that I said. And then, uh, Velma originally had made a comment of something like, um, someone had one too many Scooby snacks this morning or something, and they cut that out. Oh, gosh. It, well, why, this franchise never fails to irritate me, though, because I understand it testing badly to an extent, right? Because you want your product to be as good as possible. Like, say, for example... Well, no, not say nothing, for example, like, it's just you want your stuff to be good and well-received. But if it's at, in the cinema, in the theatre, it's made the money it's going to make or not going to make. So why tamper with it after the fact for a home release? Right. That yeah. is what doesn't make sense. Or at least make one, like, the watered-down cut, or just have a, th a thing in the bonus features, like, watch the extended version. I don't know why they made that decision. That's ridiculous. Oh, I'm sad. Yeah, it's so strange what they've done with these live action movies. The like editing and things that had to go on seems very extreme. Yeah, and I'm not I'm not there for it to be honest because I think by this point they should have known what they wanted from things. Because... Yeah, like we know the amount they had to change the first one. So you'd think they'd have a definitive picture of this is acceptable, this isn't, we're doing that. And even then, we're two years into what's new Scooby-Doo at this point, aren't we? So it's like, yeah. it's well established, there's a fandom around it now. So. <laughs> I guess sticking on the museum for a second, something I want to mention. Does this museum inspire Velma's family's business in Mystery Incorporated? True. Well, it's difficult to yeah. say because you can read it that way. And I think th from a creative point of view, probably. Like, what do you mean? Do you mean, does it because inspire Velma? Velma's family yeah. literally run a museum. Of old that, costumes. That, yeah. Except they yeah, remembered what... to include the Lunar Ghost. And they included Scrappy yeah. and Flim Flam. You know what? <laughs> we could say happened after it was all trashed Velma's family was there and they invested money bought it out and then with the gang's help reset it up with all of like the updated costumes the old costumes and revamped it so it was smaller but you know still there and mm. this time you can actually speak to the gang every now and then I think timeline wise you'd have to rejig it a lot because obviously this is in Coolsville Velma's business is in Crystal Cove. They're supposedly adults in this, but then the high school kids in Mystery Incorporated. But I would want to see that. But I'm almost thinking, oh, is Scooby-Doo and the design, has it got worse? Because I'm trying to think about more modern monsters that I would love to have seen costumes of in this movie if it was made today. And I'm struggling to think of many. I think... No, I'm not going to say that that's a bit nasty about the Scooby. I just feel like there's been... Like, have there been any monsters that have stood the test of time the way that the old classic ones have? And I'm not a Scooby no. purist, but I'm thinking not. Like, I'm taking yeah, a look no, behind really. me, and the Cyber Chase is probably the last one where I'm like, yes, that's a good villain. The Loch Ness Monster obviously was good well, no, for me, but that's lot from pretty the direct, established. There's loads from the direct to DVD thing. I'm thinking more series, like series-based villains. 
Yeah, but it's kind of like, after like, what's new, what did you have? You have, like, Scooby-Doo and Guess Who, which is, like, it's sad to think that if nothing else got released, that's what we'd be ending Smash or Pass on. No, I can't <laughs> even face that. Like, the, I can't face that. Because I'm not interested in that series at all. I'm really not. I think there's a One lot of the cool, ghosts like, that I do like from modern series is... Rosariana? Yeah, Rosariana. Yeah, Rosariana. So, um, one of the ones that I like is The Freak of Crystal Cove, because oh, that yeah. scares me. That's a cool one. I think Mystery Incorporated had some really interesting ghosts, like the Manticore, the, you know, uh, we had Krampus. I want the and baby clown. That would be a cool yeah. costume. What about right, the baby ones, clown, yeah. when the, one of the episodes that um, John Colton Barry did of Mystery Incorporated? You know the biker ones. John Colton Barry was. I like that. Cool. Oh, oh, not be cool. Sorry, I mean Roger Ashkaber. Oh, yes. I would have them. The that little it. thing. Yeah, the 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 monster thing, the little gremlin yeah. creature. I would have. Yeah, there's oh, a lot yeah. from those I, two that I would have. Yes, while we're speaking, yeah, Roger Ashkaber and John Colton Barry did some good films. They did. Um, I guess while speaking of villains, we're now at the stage of the movie where the pterodactyl appears at the museum and there's one part of this kind of chase scene that ensues that i actually find really funny you know when shaggy and skibby have a kind of attached to the rope and they like ride a frying pan over the fire i don't know why <laughs> but when i saw that this time around i laughed like quite harsh <laughs> do you think that this was like a good scene jb how they do the pterodactyl or you you look either tired or indifferent mm, it's just you know it's what it is it's what it is um yeah it's just it, i don't know i feel like i'm very i don't know I'm okay not... fine how about the evil masked figure jb what do you think to them they're all right i love how i love their voice the way that they go mystery incorporated like i think that's very imposing I think maybe for uh, for a movie, like a cinematic release, it's a tad bit stinky how the main antagonist in the first one was a human, and now we've got another humanoid type thing here. Whereas if it's Scooby, we've seen so many mechanical things, so many creatures that we're even going to see later on in this movie, that it would have been kind of cool to see a more monstrous and imposing based costume rather than like a Halloween type thing. One thing that I want to say is that this movie kind of ruined my childhood and I hold it against it quite heavily. How? <laughs> because in my head, the person in the mask was going to be the villain that they unmasked, if that makes sense. I've probably not worded that the very well. The person in the mask. You know, like, they unmask the evil mask figure at the end? Yeah. For me, the person voice in the evil mask figure and the person in the costume should have been the person who it was and jb was mm. like oh this is the person that played the evil masked figure and we're, i'm gonna try and reach out to him i was like what do you mean like come on we know who the evil masked figure was and they're like no like there was a different actor there was a different voice you just don't see yeah them. i was like <laughs> ouch that that's genuinely hurt i don't know why like <laughs> I probably should have worked that out. I don't know why I'd not like thought about it, but like it was, I kind of just got this weird feeling like when he was like, oh yeah, there was an entirely different actress. Oh, I don't like that. That doesn't rest well with me. I don't know why. <laughs> um, Rihanna, what do you think to the evil masked figure? I think that, uh, so going briefly onto the first Scooby-Doo movie, you know, the like, the uh i can't remember the name the like mirror ball how it was the face the face it kind of reminds me of the face of the evil mask figure for some reason mm. and i think that could have been done i mean i may be giving way too much you know like leeway in their thought process but i think that it may have been done as like a slight okay this is how we can tie it in we're kind of foreshad for, uh, bleh, foreshadowing like what's to come in like scooby his uh like future and stuff but i like them i like it was a very simple concept and sometimes simple is the scariest because it's also kind of like with scooby-doo 
the mystery begins it ties in with that a little bit as well with you know it's kind of an evil masked figure as well in some ways so you know it's one that is a basic scooby villain but at the same time if done correctly which i think they did because there are a lot of twists and turns it it was good but the costume was basic and you know i kind of preferred how the monsters were actually done but i mean you know it's just a guy in a costume smash what did you think to the evil mask figure I maybe I'm a little biased with this movie, but um, I I don't know how to explain it, but like I really like the essence of the evil mask figure. I don't like his design isn't amazing. I am I actually have this book. Funny enough, it's like a Scooby Doo joke book. Um. Uh, I'm pulling it out right now. So it's Scooby-Doo A to Z Ultimate Joke Book. And there's actually a page um, in here because there's a lot of like cartoons, Scooby-Doo pictures in here. But um, on one of the pages, uh, it actually has a animated version of what the evil mass figure would look like if it was like in a move, like a cartoon movie rather than a live action movie. And like, not gonna lie, I'm kind of like, your cartoon version almost looks a little creepier, honestly. <laughs> um, but I'll have to send you guys a picture so you can see. But I have to say, again, he's not like, he doesn't do a whole lot. He's kind of like, like I don't know if you guys have seen the Disney Descendants movies. Um, but like, the third film, like, the evil mess figure kind of reminds me of Audrey in Descendants 3, where Audrey's just like, sitting in this cabin, yelling at this staff. And I'm like, the evil mess figure, I mean, though he's not sitting in one place, he just, he kind of just, like, threatens the gang with his words. You know, because he's not really the one that made the monsters. He made maybe three in total, but he didn't make the ones that ended up going all across the town. Um, and so, you know, I, I really like him, I do, but I also can see why people might be bored or unbothered by him um i have to say though like when he does speak i really really like his lines and how um he delivers them i think he has some of the best scooby-doo villain lines um especially considering that this is i mean spoiler alert a revenge plot mm. oh yeah like, now this is that you're the one that's gonna be unmasked like it's like you did this to me, so I'm gonna do this to you. Almost an eye for an eye type scenario. Mm. Right. Okay, so I think the next kind of thing... Oh, why didn't they just make him Old Man Smithers? He <laughs> says at the end of that scene, I'll get you for this. And imagine that, you unmask the evil mask figure. I told you I'll get you for that. Like, oh, <laughs> come on, man. Okay, so this Missed is where they go back to the HQ, right? Yes, and I want so, to talk about the HQ for a little bit. I don't want to make it this wacky debate, but I I don't really think it suits the Mystery Inc. that I know from, I guess, the cartoons and even from movie one, but it's such a cool design. It reminds me, and I said this to Millie when we were watching it, like, this is how I imagine either the offices of Facebook or Google looking, like kind of this modern hip tech place, and I want to be there. I think even Ernst Half said that their wife got a tour around it when they were filming. And I'm yeah. just like, oh my gosh, how does it feel like to live my dream? Because I'd, I'd oh, please, these movies are masterpieces. They should have just opened it to the public for an experience. And I think they must have just torn it down. And I'll never forgive humanity for doing that. I think. A point that I think is worth making about the HQ is something that JB and I were talking about when we did our watch through, is it was almost like, it was almost too like clinical. It was kind of like there was not enough personality to it. Like, for example, it, on the sofa area, I think they'd got a green cushion, a purple one, a blue one, and... Like, there was one for each of the gang, these 
like cushions. Oh, I've but never noticed. Other that. than that, there's nothing else that kind of indicates their personality, their areas. Whereas, like when you get to the treehouse later on, there's a definitive Daphne section. But... Then there's blue shelves that are quite clearly <laughs> Fred's. Then there's this green seated area that's almost got this hippie pattern on that matches. It's very similar to the shirt that Shaggy wears to the faux ghost that would quite clearly be their section. And then the centre's this like scientific setup that's quite clearly Velma. That's very much more what I would but imagine. But I think I could see that being like fully intentional because they have like a, like a conversation in that like this reminds you of the good old days when we solved mysteries just because we loved them, not because we had something to prove. I think that almost could have been a conversation of the old, like the new HQ is their PR move, it's their face to the public, it's where they're going to give interviews from, it's where they're going to give people tours around and explain how to be a mystery solver, you know, it's a PR piece that's going to get them more famous and more credibility. And I think with that conversation, there could have almost been a story of maybe there's some truth in the other mass figure's words. Maybe we have become something we're not and we're just doing it more for the press now because we have become so successful and famous that maybe the evil mass figure does unmask them, but they're going to then use that as a strength. So they're going to go back to the treehouse or the clubhouse and realize who they really are and go, okay, this is how we used to do things. Maybe he has a point, but now we're going to use this to get, to come together and defeat all the monsters that we used to. It's perfect symbolism. In order to become their true selves, they have to defeat ghosts of their own past because it's like overcoming your old demons. And so by the end of the movie, they'll be the mystery ink that they must be. And you can read it that way, but at no point does it really set that up. And it's like, that could have been a great story, but it just, it's not really spelled out. But maybe that's just me trying to make it something that it isn't, but that's how I could like to read it. I guess progressing on a little bit, because I guess there's still quite a lot to get through, really. Um, they all go to Wickles Manor, and this is a scene that I always personally enjoyed. You know where they ring the doorbell twice and end up in that, that ball that like rolls down? That looks so fun. Like, I might be a bit mad, but did anyone else just watch them rolling around in that ball and think, oh, that looked quite good, I'd enjoy that? Yes, and like now you can get those inflatable ones, which you can just like oh, yeah. go around like a hamster ball. And I really want to try it. My my favorite line is so it's like Girl Scout cookies. <laughs> <laughs> I also like what they do with Daphne here. Like you know the escape thing. It was kind of like watching this growing up when I was like, yes, I'm proud to be a girl because I can be like. I can be like quite lazy sometimes no, and like not, not doing makeup and not dressing nicely. Not but lazy. I also have times when I like to be like more Daphne esque. And this was one of the moments growing up where I was like, yes, I like being a girl. Just because she uses makeup to solve the problem and I won't leave the house without makeup. She on. is amazing. Like, there's nothing she can't do. She is like human prime you know what i mean that's how she's written um although i, like I do think it's it. hilarious that she wears a t-shirt that's got a picture of herself on it i mean would you not wear your own merch but i would wear if we got smash and pa smash our pass hoodies made i would wear a smash our pass hoodie yes but i wouldn't wear a t-shirt that had a picture of me on the front of it like she does i find that very strange I'm so glad you brought this up because I, no, I was gonna no, say. No, no, screw you all. It's gorgeous. If I, if, if even if I'm Sarah Michelle Gellar, if I could look in the mirror and see Sarah Michelle Gellar's face twice, I'm doing it. You better believe I'm doing it. You guys are just you. You haters. Okay. Like would you wear a T-shirt that had a picture of you on it? Regardless of if you look like Gellar or not, would you wear a... uh, me? Well, I look like Ned from Spider Man. No. <laughs> <laughs> Smash, would you wear a pic a t shirt that had a picture of you on it? Only if it was like a cartoon. Yeah, like if we had like Smash Our Past ones made that had all our cartoons on it, that would be quite cool. But I not would... like a photo of me plastered on a shirt. No, Rihanna, would you? Okay, this may sound a little bit 
self-absorbed but not in like a bad way i would if i was famous because then once i take up i would sign it and then sell it for money yeah, for yeah see business i would like profit. oh no jb not profit for me but i would do like a fundraiser oh, for wait, charity si oh oh hmm, that's lame but <laughs> like you do you, you do you <laughs> oh jb <Jamie. laughs> because wrestlers do it all the time Maybe Daphne's to get the see Daphne's giving to charity. Do you, uh, maybe maybe Smash and Millie have something against charity. I don't, you know what I mean. Like the oh. the the, uh, <laughs> the opinions of Smash and Millie are not representative of Smash or Pass Media and those that represent it. JB, your idea of a charitable action to go to the shop and buy yourself a new DVD. Yeah, but DVD no 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 because every time I buy a DVD. It's telling the studios, the corporations, oh my gosh, physical items still sell. We need to keep making DVDs. We're not going to live in a digital world where everything's all NFQs, NFTs, and But the if you buy them secondhand, then the studio don't ever know that, and you buy them secondhand, so the studio don't know. Yeah, but... Yeah, exactly. It's not like, yeah, no, 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 okay. no, no. It's okay. No. Oh, I would okay. If I I would have a T-shirt with Sarah Michelle Gellar on it. That's what I'm saying. You don't be a hater. It's better than the poncho. Although the poncho did make a pretty sweet Barbie doll, so I'm not gonna hate on that because one day I'm gonna find that Barbie and I'm gonna love it. Oh, I'm surprised you don't have it already. No, well, the one that I wanted to, the one that I was really simping for was the one from the first movie with the boots and the outfit and the laptop and the little Scooby and oh my gosh, I think if this house was burning down and I could pick a handful of things, that might be one of them. Okay. And the other one would be Millie, of course. Unless I drop the Barbie, then Millie is getting, getting absorbed by the flames. I'm just kidding. I'll That's Millie. not you. So we'll... Maybe I'd make sure your your doll was left inside here. Don't worry. Well, actually, <laughs> if it's Toy Story, poster. okay. Then let me ask you a question. Ooh. Let me ask you a question, Millie. Mm -hmm. If you were famous, would you wear a T-shirt with your own face on? No, that? never. No, never once. No. Okay, you do you. You do you. Millie is famous. What are you talking about? Famous hey, for what? Jamie? Oh. I have people to support me. She's Millie's famous for being an absolute queen. Exactly, JB. Uh, You're too busy simping over Gala to notice. I'm not simping. You are simping. I have the screenshot of proof, JB. Well, <laughs> my name is Jeff. <laughs> okay. So once they escape the balls, they then start <laughs> to explore Wickles Manor. Wickles old ball. <laughs> um, Scooby goes off and finds the clue about um, the Fogo. Do, 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 do. And, he's awesome. and um, Daphne is going to fight the Black Knight Ghost. I also have one comment at this stage. So they've all gone back to like their more original outfits. I think, personally, that Fred from What's, uh, yeah, Fred from What's New gets a lot of hate for his outfit. But here, Freddie Prince Jr. doesn't look like he's dressed as Fred. No. <laughs> he's wearing a t-shirt, jacket, jeans. He's just casual on a day out. He's not been Fred. Like, I'm like, come on. If we're going to hate on what's new, then can somebody please point out that he, this outfit has zero... Well, I can't say it has zero effort because I don't know if you noticed, but you know, like, the hem around the neck, they made that red to um, like, almost like it was echoing like the ascot and stuff. Yeah, and they do something similar with Daphne and Scoob, which I really love, but yeah, the only time I'll be like a Scooby purist or whatever is in relation to Fred's outfit, because I've not seen a Fred outfit apart from that like or original design, but I'm like, oh yeah, that's Fred. Yeah, this outfit just wasn't Fred, but the Daphne fighting scene, JB, you've got to the count of 15 to simp well actually i'm not, I'm not simping i almost want to plug oh. virtual re like retro um, gaming because the game boy game for this um, fight scene was so cool no. you get to be in wickle's like um, office as um, um sarah michelle geller daphne well, with like a massive like like 30. knight in shining armor weapon and it's such oh, a fun 50. level and i love it and she's a queen what i think is really inspiring at this stage is that it's <laughs> Velma that destroys the black knight ghost not da not daphne 
What do you mean not yeah. Dulcinea? Well, because she because the weakness is the the round tables. So do you not find it interesting you have round that it took Velma to defeat the Black Knight Ghost, not Daphne? Well, I think it's a testament, right? It goes hand in hand. You need Velma to to do the research. You need Velma. No, but she delivered know, the final blow. To know the I... the pinpoint. Well, what? Well, what? 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 Are they, what's she gonna say in a kids' movie? Hit it in the hit it in the dick, like. I mean... <laughs> go for the crotch. <laughs> I kind of so in this scene first of all. <laughs> this scene is when it's being shown on like TV on Sky Cinema. Every single time it it's on, and I click it to turn it on, it's always at this scene, and I'm always <laughs> just cracking up laughing. But what I think is nice is that it kind of, in some ways, shows the two different personalities. We've got Daphne, who's going over the top. You know, she's very she's a big personality, and she's like. Okay, I'm going to do all these like martial arts things I've learned. You Gliding know, down the staircase. <laughs> and then you've got Velma who's like, okay, you know what? Let's panic, but let's also get down to business. This is what you've actually got to do. Will you stop, you know, trying to show off? There's it's a male, <laughs> it's very clearly got one weakness. <laughs> and um, you know, but I think what's nice is that it's showing that those who are smart and Rihanna's nerdy, spitting if you want to say, yeah. they can That's also all. save the day because we see the scary one, you know, the scared ones in Shaggy and Scooby saving the day. We always see Fred and Daphne doing something. But Velma is always the secret powerhouse, and instead of telling them what to do, she's just like, you know, I'm going to steal the spotlight for once. I'm I'm going to take this thing down. I think that's a very good point. My thing is, is I almost feel like the Black Knight ghost could have defeated them, because they clearly show the ability to be able to almost remotely control their sword. And it's like, if they wanted to, they could do, like, a Yondu arrow thing from Guardians of the Galaxy, and they wouldn't sure. stand a chance. But they're not going to show <laughs> that, nor should they. But I'm thinking the Black Knight Ghost could do a little bit more of his powers. Okay, so that scene kind of wraps up. They go back to the HQ, when Pat, uh, which is where Patrick arrives, and we have this scene of Velma crawling around hiding for, from him, which is when she gets a Daphne makeover. And from her getting this Daphne makeover, do, I do, genuinely do, can't do, watch it. I cringe so much. I just, I can't look at the screen the entire time she's wearing that outfit and she's around Patrick. It's just so awkward from the thing she does where she's trying to like purse her lips up. <laughs> I can't look at it. I genuinely can't. I mean, I like the scene because it's funny. It's different. Again, without scenes like this, I don't think like these could maybe they're, like they're a lot better than movies made for like kids and families nowadays. But I think they could have almost faded into obscurity. Like, oh, do you remember that movie that you watched one time as a child or whatever? Like for a lot of people. But it's scenes like this that you almost think there's no way that they would make anything like that in a kids' movie nowadays. Um, and I, I, think... I want to say, and JB's going to maybe shout at me for this, we'll see. This movie has more memorable moments than the first one. I think its vibe isn't as memorable, but I think it has more memorable moments. Like, yeah. I think back to this movie... And there's so many things that I can recall. Like the whole section of the fur ghost is almost like 2002 movie overload, right? Because it's written by the same person. I feel like James Gunn, James Gunn's personality is the 2002 movie. Yeah. And I think that almost goes into Pandora's box in this movie, and that box is the fur ghost. And so all that vibe is kind of me. It's just, I don't know. The, my thing with this scene is that I just don't understand what point it's trying to make. Because it's fun, but narratively, it's Daphne's advice. And are they saying that that's wrong because it's not who Velma really is? But then it just kind of happens. There's no it resolution kind of to that saying Daphne's, Daphne's advice isn't good. Like, <laughs> yeah. she's saying appearance is everything. And how does she conveniently have does hair look... extensions that's Velma's colour hair? Does Velma how does she conveniently though? have a red orange like red orangey coloured like jumpsuit thing? Mm. Kinda like she's been <gasps> planning for Velma to meet Patrick forever. Or <laughs> two thousand two movie vibes. 
what if you know what if oh. something that Duffy I likes a... to dress Velma in? Wait, what? Well, <laughs> it fits I... her. It's her color. We don't know. I was, but... I, I was thinking more. Of what if Daphne like is secretly, what? A, like she's secretly a Velma fan and goes and cosplays as her. I mean, it's oh, <laughs> maybe that was like the precursor to the to the song at the end of Curse of the Lake Monster. They were gonna do it here, but it just <laughs> it got deleted. Hashtag release the gun cut. But <laughs> this is ridiculous because I agree with what everyone's saying, but I'm almost like, are, is are people unanimously in agreement that Velma's more attractive in the scene ne there than she is normally? Because I'm gonna say no, right? I'm gonna say not. But I don't know. I've never thought about Velma that way, so I'm not. I'm not the expert on Velma, simply. Maybe Milius. No. Okay, so the next scene is the Fogo, and I think I've already started to talk about this a lot. I kind of want to save my opinion till last. I think it's maybe the most different. So Juby, the Fogo, you said it's quite. Iconic. Yeah. I think they should have. There's a deleted scene about the faux ghost in the faux ghost. You know where they enter as like MC McCrawley and Shizzy McCreepy? Or SD McCrawley, not MC McCrawley. <laughs> but there's like a MC. scene <laughs> where there, there's like a whack a mole machine and then there's a dartboard. And I think it is in the deleted scene where Shaggy goes, I'd hate to see the urinals in this place. I think yeah. that's a joke that most kids wouldn't have really. Like they would have understood it if they thought about it, but I think it would have gone over most kids' heads to the point where, if you're a parent, you instantly get it, and it's instantly, genuinely quite funny that they should have kept that in. And it just... It, it annoys me that it didn't take it out. There's also a deleted scene where the cotton candy glob has a little tangent, which I'm glad that they cut out, but that one joke, I think, should have been amazing. Because I would have gone to those urinals quite a lot um, for reasons, <laughs> you know what I mean? Because I'm a thirsty boy, I might need the toilet a lot. Okay, so Smash, what do you think to the faux ghost? I think the idea of it is cool, but then, and this is probably just like putting too much logic into it, but like, think, even when all those criminals got out of jail, I mean like, because you see them solve mysteries from so many places, it's like, they would not all just like collectively be there once they got out of jail and so like i think that's just my one big gripe about it otherwise i do kind of like the idea of um well and especially with uh, mr wickles i like kind of his little story here of being like you know after you got us and we went to jail we you know sat and took time to think about what we did and whatever even though we're still angry it's like we just weren't happy with who we were. And so I think the scene in itself, I really like, but the place of it, I have a few questions. Hey, Rihanna, what did you think to this scene? I have so much to say about this scene because it's genuinely one of my favorites. So first quickly to bounce off of Ash, what I think may have happened was because at least in England, when you're released from prison, if it's for a certain crime, like, if, I, I mean, you get added to, like, registers for doing certain things, and um, it, you're kind of restricted to one area, so I think that maybe, mm. like, they got released and they're not allowed out of there, kind of thing. They just right. say um, not to Blackpool over there. But... <laughs> but... I, I, how do you put up with him, really? <laughs> I really don't know. <laughs> but I think I'm amazing. With this scene, you, you are. are amazing. <laughs> Not me, <laughs> <Not me> darling. <laughs> but with this scene, so for people who haven't watched the behind the scenes things, um, Scooby was actually played by a female. So where Scooby's chest is, is where her head was. Yeah, uh-huh. And um, I watch that every time before I watch it on DVD, and I love it. I, I love this whole scene. Like, oh my gosh, okay. 
so from when they walk in, they're just like, hey, hey, hey. It's just so them, you know? And then from the really touching moment, where it's like, you know, to Old Man Winkles, or is it Winkles? No, <laughs> Wickles, sorry. <laughs> um, he is pretty wrinkly. Wrinkles. <laughs> when there's no chest wrinkles. <laughs> <laughs> And um, you know, it's like, well, you must be thankful for them. And then he's like, no. And he's just like, okay, back away. And then the dance scene, you know, is thank you for letting. Oh, I like, love that oh, part. I love, oh, I love, love, love this movie. And I real box to the song is oh, I love it. It's iconic. Yeah. And the thing is, I want to learn. <laughs> I want to learn how to roller skate to do this dance on roller skate. Ooh, that'd be so fun. <laughs> you do it. You put it on Instagram when you learn. I mean, it is quite a talent to be able to roller skate. I mean, I would say it takes a real virtuoso to be able to roller skate. <laughs> it's like a little bit of an inside joke. I mean, it's a good scene. I'm really upset, though, because I found, finally, after so long, the bit of shaggy shirt, that card, Frank works, and it's gone. But I'm determined to not get one unless I find one in England, because then it's mad if you have to, like, just for a card, to ship a card from the US to the UK is like $30 in import fees and then $20 shipping. So $50 just to get a card from the US to the UK. Without the cost of the card included. Yeah, exactly. So I'm sad. But it's but, such a great scene, and I think one day we should all learn the Fogo dance, and we're gonna do it together. Let's do I it. Think, I think it'll be on roller skates. <laughs> it better be. <laughs> I think I over glorified this scene in my head. Like I used to think this was the one of the best scenes in Scooby. I used to love it. This is and so then bad. I've not seen this for like before we did the watch for this. I want to say I've not seen Monsters Unleashed for the best part of ten years. Ten years. Oh my god! Oh, yeah. We've not really? seen it together, really, had we? Because we always went for two thousand two. No, we saw well. We saw it recent. Well, not recently. It was. I want to say the last time we properly sat down to watch it was july of la last july but would it have been at a time when i was falling asleep no and you were it was in the morning something? it was in the morning i'm sure i didn't watch I... it like i think it must have been years since i last time watched this properly so i was really excited for this scene and i think like a younger version of me had somehow made it even more elaborate than what it was or maybe you just saw the extended cut in the thin in the cinema maybe mm. but i don't know like it seems almost a calm version of what I was expecting. So I was like, mm. I always like, I mean, even though I've seen this movie so many times, I always think this scene, like this whole scene when they're there is longer than it actually is. Cause so, like, I'll watch it and then it's like, I'll look down or whatever. Cause you know, it's like, I can picture in my head. I don't, this is a movie. I don't have to consciously sit and watch, but, um, but then like, I'll look up and it's like, they're already, you know, falling down the trash chute, and I'm like, whoa, what happened? See, I think in my head I almost combine it with, you know, like in the credits when everybody's at the faux ghost. Yeah. Like you said, you right. almost think the scene's longer. It's almost like I kind of crammed all the memories from that into that <laughs> as well. And so I was just expecting more from it, like more people dancing and stuff. I don't really know. Right. But for whatever reason, it just kind of missed the mark a little bit. I don't know. Um, okay, so after the faux ghost, where am I now with my notes? Uh, oh yeah, the other thing I put with the faux ghost though is that I love Scooby's outfit. Oh, and was there a cameo um, from Neil Fanning in this scene? Maybe. I want to say yes. Yes. Okay, so I think now they go back to the museum and there's been more costumes stolen. This is when... I think culture sucks. Yes, that's literally <laughs> the next thing I was going to say. Fred's <laughs> iconic line. It does cool well suck, though. Maybe they agreed and that's why it's in Crystal Cove now, because Freddie Prinze's word of wisdom was just so impactful <laughs> to the studio. <laughs> Can okay. I quickly just say, Millie and I think so much alike. I think we have the same brief. Brain, brain wavelength because great minds think alike. Yeah, but Millie's watched the end game. 
<laughs> oh, don't start Baby. this with Rihanna again, GB. Thank you, stop. The clock is ticking, Rihanna. Your time is nearly over. When, no, you two, you two agreed to date, JB. Wait till that date is passed. <laughs> yeah. It's coming for you. When it's did you agree? I don't even you. remember when you agreed, but you agreed to date. Tomorrow. I'm, I'm going, no, we Tomorrow. didn't. Don't you <laughs> lie, JB. Don't you dare lie. I said, and I even messaged you, I said, I'm hoping to watch it next Thursday. So I have until oh. May the 8th, which is Tati's birthday, by the way. So I have... Happy birthday. Don't, don't, like, rush me into being emotionally scarred. Well, it, it could be an Easter special. No! I'm not <laughs> ruining my Easter! It's a really good movie. Oh, but ruining her there Easter. There we go, there we go. No, I can't. <laughs> I will bring my brother in here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, JB, you just, just let Rihanna have till the end of the time. Right, can I, you can I have a rant? Before doing this can again? I have a rant about <laughs> Heather Jasper Howe? Yeah. Okay. Heather Jasper Howe's a. Oh. Like, why? How the hell? <laughs> where does she get off thinking that she can speak to Daphne like that? Like, oh, oh hey, Fred's the leader. Oh, Velma's <laughs> the smart one. You're just a pretty face. Shut up. What like, did you, you need to respect Daphne. How dare you disrespect <laughs> Daphne like that? She is the heart of Mystery Inc. She's the soul of Mystery Inc. She has got the penis legs. She's in the diva of Mystery Inc. Like, her legs in this movie are mad. Her outfits, apart from the ridiculous ones, are on fleek. She's got power. She's got strength. <laughs> she's got knowledge. She's got strength. She's got integrity. She's an all-around amazing person. And Heather Jasper, freaking how, is like, oh, you're no good. If I was in that scene, I, you can't hit women, I'd unmask her to reveal it's Jacobo and punch him in the face. Oh my gosh, JB's turned violent. I can't stand her. The disrespect of a pure queen is just... So, so tell me what her role in Mystery Inc is again, JB. Before, you know, like, John Colton Barry came along and gave her the title of the people person, what did she do? She's the heart and the soul. And what does that mean? It means she's groovy. So she, she brings groovy. the fun and she brings the funk. I'm sure that's Shaggy and Skeevy. No, Shaggy, Shaggy's a groovy dude. I won't, I won't deny. What won't I'm deny. finding here, JB, is that you're actually struggling yourself to tell us what Daphne brings. She's the fighter. <laughs> she's. I think she's the warrior. May I be on JB's side for a second, which is definitely hard after what he was saying five seconds ago about oh, Endgame. <laughs> you should be thanking me right now, JB. <laughs> um, I think what Daphne brings is she brings something which the others don't have because, you know, Fred is very much strategic and muscle. Velma is very much strategic brains, you know, that kind of sense. Shaggy and Scooby, stomach and the speed because they can run 50 miles in two seconds i think um i think what <laughs> you daphne, think <laughs> what what daphne brings is kind of something that none of them have which is to unify everyone because she's very much a spoiled brat i will admit that and you know she dumps her foot especially in certain movies no no and no 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 because she's got okay she's fine she's got the money she can fund the mystery machine she Baby. might be a bit rich and a bit but she's charismatic she is the iron Baby. man of the avengers she, she's the just iron man just wish other people's turn now <laughs> Sim. be quiet she's iron man what jb what i was going to say is that even though you know she is very Bratty, moody, Spoiled. can't really force a See, smile when everyone else is like, <laughs> When anyone else is like succeeding, she can't seem to be happy for them unless it's like her friends. She shows a lot of loyalty as well, but also determination. And I think that's the thing because when others are ready to give up, she was determined to get Velma to, you know, go on a date. She was determined to, you know, be her own hero and in the end that determination is what kept the gang you know it, it is what made the gang come back together in the first movie and you know want to save scooby because she was like you know what 
I can go off by myself. You guys do this. I'm going to go off and make sure that sunlight roof thingy is, you know, thing. I'm going to I'm going to do it. And she takes that initiative, which I think sometimes the others lack. So, JB, so does that make sense? Can we agree then that Daphne is the spunk of mystery? Ain't? JB. No, she she's re she's replaceable. <laughs> she's the spunk of mystery. <laughs> what, and she's what, got I, spunk. what I'd say. She's full of spunk. JB, can you please stop saying that word? You're <laughs> deliberately just trying to sound like you're what? just. She's got spunk. You're literally just trying think... to place words that could be, can be construed as rude. Just well, for, I'm like, not trying to put spunk practice. in anyone else's mouth. I'm just Please saying spunk. And do you want to know the one thing I'm a bit worried about with Linda Cardinelli? Did she have to wear a jumper underneath that like leather outfit? Because that would have been boiling hot. She just like pulls it out and the amount of takes they would have had to do, that would be really uncomfortable. True. I guess the alternative would have been she wasn't, but then she had to take it off to then put the jumper on to then put the outfit off again. What I'm going to say is that outfit's that tight, you think you'd have been able to see a jumper underneath it. But, yeah. Hmm. I don't know. We should... I want to interview her, Wanda. That would be fun. Um, and I think... Is this where... They... Oh, I want to say the, the next, at least memorable bit is... Because we see Fred who watches himself on the TV, then it is the chemical drinks, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, they're following Wickles, oh, the old and then they lose him. Oh, time. yeah, with Seth Green's really deep voice. Oh, yeah, like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's a good <laughs> This was such a pain to do in the game, because you have to like follow old man Wickles, and at a random moment, he would, like, whoosh his head around. And if you were caught in his line of sight, you'd lost the whole level and you have to do it all over again. Did you play the Game Boy one or the PC? Both. I think I remember oh, okay. primarily the Game Boy one, because I just never finished it until recently. But the PC one was like, I've not played that since I was a kid, but I really want to find it. I was going to say, I was like, I've, I never did play the Game Boy one, but I have the PC one. I was like, I don't remember that part. But yeah, they are different. So, but one sense. of the main parts I remember from the PC one is there was like this mini game where you were Scooby in Old Man Wickles' mansion. You had to like fire things at ghosts that were coming after you. Yeah, and uh -huh. then you had to be Shaggy and Scooby eating different parts of the cotton candy glove. Yeah. Other than that, I'm kind of not remembering it too much, which makes me sad because I used to play it a lot. The chemicals. Millie, do you want to talk about chemicals? Yeah. So what chemicals are your favourite? <laughs> do you like the one that turns Scooby into JP Manu? Is that the scientist one? Yeah, he's the one where he's... Well, he's... See, I've written them all down. He's an alien, and then he's the Tasmanian Devil, which, by the way, they should have made a crossover movie between Scooby-Doo and, like, Looney Tunes back in action Real. because there was a Scooby reference in that movie and there's a Looney Tunes reference in this movie it's like they could have had their own cinematic universe even with those movies alone did you all know that that was originally going to be cartoon version of Scooby but they didn't want to confuse the audience and mix and match it so they did Tasmanian Devil instead. No. So would they have got Frank Welker Scooby to do that? Or would it have been Scott Innes Scooby at the time? I don't know. Yeah, That's a good question. Frank, because if it was what's new Scooby Doo era. Right. It would have been Frank Welker. See, that wouldn't. Oh, see, that would have been good. But then again, Tasmanian Devil, you just don't expect it. It's another thing like, why the hell are they there? And then you've got Professor Scooby, who is JP Manu. Also voiced the Scrappy Saurus Rex in the first movie. Um, what do you think of JP Manu, Rihanna? Oh, we've been through this. He, oh gosh, the thing is, when I found out what I did, ruined that for me because I love, I love that scene. You know, we see all different things. You know, we see female Shaggy, we see buff Shaggy, we see scientist Scooby, Tasmanian Scooby. You know. Oh, Alien Scooby. That that one is one of my favourites. <laughs> but J.P. Manu did a 
good voice, okay? That's all I'm going to say because he is, you can go onto Google, okay, and find out what he did and he is a pervert and he, oh, I don't like him. He gives me the chills and not like, oh gosh, no, I don't like him. I mean, I, I, I guess to, <laughs> to, 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 to add a disclaimer, and I think this is the only thing that I'll have taken away from being a law student is, I, depending on what happened, I think he's allegedly a pervert. So we'll say that he's an alleged pervert. There was proof, though. He had the recordings. Allegedly. <laughs> in the court, JB. Allegedly. Millie and I both read it. Allegedly. <laughs> Millie, do you, did you or did you not? Swear on your life, read the article that I did. I'm pretty sure we read the same article. I think it went to settlement or something, I'm not sure. Allegedly. Well, well, well it's good though. I mean, he did a good voice, and that's all that, all that matters for this, for, this, for this review. We'll say that. Now, a question <laughs> for, I think, Smash, because I think Smash is the keeper of records for this movie. Um... <laughs> For the scenes with Shaggy, be it Lady Shaggy or Buff Shaggy, did they use an actor slash actress or whatever to be those bodies and they just did Matthew Lillard's face over them? Or was it like CGI madness? So I be I know with the female body that is a different actress and they just use face tracing um, with Matthew Lillard's face, which actually, if you watch either the blu-ray version or if uh it's on like netflix or something over in the uk and you can watch an hd version the head tracking at that part sucks nowadays it looks so bad but it's fine um but i think buff shaggy was probably cgi i'm not entirely sure with that one i just know the female shaggy was another actress Hmm, okay, okay. I like that. I want to try and interview them. I want to try and interview everyone. <laughs> so, we've got Velma suspecting Patrick. Here's a question, and I don't know if this was a deleted scene, maybe it was in the theatrical release, but one plot hole I have with the Evil Mass Figures plan is, like, Shaggy and Scooby don't need to load anything or boot anything up in order to make a load of more monsters, so it's not like they have to go and collect more randomonium or anything like that. So why would the Evil Mask figure not automatically transform every single costume that they had? Because surely they've got to try and keep them all under control as well. Like, do you think it includes programming that they're not to attack them? I guess based on the fact the pterodactyl carried them away, maybe you've got to assume they're programmed to not harm them, but I guess they've got to find some way of controlling them until they want them to fit with the plan. I guess that makes sense. I guess, but my thing is, we don't really see that process. It just... Because how would he, a human, like a normal person, have trained, say, the 10,000 volt ghost? Mm, it could be in the control panel, which Shaggy and Scooby, I think, mm. is take that. Well, I think all the mystery and get together at that stage and take the panel. So is he... See, there's, I, know, I guess I'm just thinking too much into it, but then I'm like, if Shaggy and Scooby are the ones that do that programming, they should have been loyal to Shaggy and Scooby then. If not, if I was the Evil Mass figure, I'd have just transformed all the costumes anyway. Mm -hmm. so, budget. Okay, so when they take the panel and stuff, they go to work on that. And at this stage, the monsters take over the town. I love that stage where the pirate ship, like, flies over the road. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, that was one of my favourite Scooby scenes. I love that so much. Um, and at this stage, they all go to the old clubhouse, which we were talking about before, and that's my absolutely love. I want to... Can we get, like, a live-action series of them in that clubhouse? It would be so fun. Ooh, I guess that's interesting, though. What is everyone's opinion on, I guess, the cast of the prequel Mystery Inc.? I can't think of any names. I know Emily Tennant did Daphne, and I think Shaggy. <laughs> who the hell plays Shaggy? Because they actually got a decent, like, accurate looking Shaggy, but. But I'm pretty sure they just aged down Freddie Prince, don't they? I have no clue. 
No. I just laugh because I I could be wrong, but whenever that scene comes on, it just sounds like they have the actual actors do the voice and not like yeah. the kids. I'm like, why are the adults voicing these kid versions? That's kind of strange. But also, I kind of like the music in that scene as well. I think that's maybe my favourite song from this album. It's You Get What You Give. Is it The New Radicals? But, oh, it's my favourite song on the album for this movie. Except for the one coming up, but that isn't on the album. I don't know why it isn't on the album. I know. I, well, I want... Okay, there's two coming up that I want. Okay, so... Or, yeah, yeah. Post flashback, yeah. they then work on the control panel. And Velma's kind of like trying to revert it so that they can destroy the monsters again. Um, yeah, make them, yeah, reverse engine it. Shaggy and Scooby are waiting outside and then, um, is it Captain Cutler appears? Yeah. Um, at which stage they're like, okay, we need to go. So they head back to the mine to plug the control panel in and reverse everything that was done so when they get there they kind of meet some ghosts outside so uh fred has to do a face off with the black knight ghost which is really good the only thing that i did say was if it was cartoon that motorbike would have been covered in the mystery machine print <laughs> true yes like i just feel like he was cheating on the mystery machine i didn't like it cartoon fred would never have allowed another vehicle to go into battle with him can I sound like a Karen for a minute? Yes. Would that have been good, or would it have been seen as maybe trying to market motorbikes to children? Could the same thing be said about Fantasaur? That's a good point. And like with hmm. the quad bikes in the first one. Oh, oh true. That's true. Although well, quad bikes, I don't know if they're actually dangerous. I don't know. I I, I was just oh, no, raised very, very anti-motorbike, so I'm just like, I don't know. But I love the scene and the music as well. It's like, is it Dead or Alive? Yeah. Uh, Wanted yeah. Dead or Alive by Bon Jovi. I love uh -huh. that. Mm, and the way that the Black Knight goes like, come over, like, he's like, hand it over, knave. It's just so good. They translated the Black Knight goes so well, I feel. I really like his voice. Yes, yeah. it's really good. I just want to know where the horse came from. Because it's a randomonium horse, but we don't yeah. see like a stuffed horse next to the Black Knight Ghost display, so eh, I don't know. But okay. What if it's ooh, what if it's the um the Headless Horseman's horse? Ooh. That's actually really cool because they could have mixed and matched. Okay. I we, like that. We then have Daphne fighting the electric ghost. The electric ghost scares me so much. It's the one ghost that genuinely terrifies me from these movies. <laughs> the lunar ghost gets close. Like, you know the scene where it holds the candle up to its face and you almost see, like, black teeth in the in the mouth? Mm -hmm. But the lunar ghost from the voice, the way that it screams die, and electricity in general gives me the heebie-jeebies. It scares me. And this was the level in the Game Boy game that I never got past until recently because... The 10,000 volt ghost just kept frying me. But I think Daphne is a bit ridiculous in this scene because she tries to like kick it and it's like, yeah, why? It's it's electricity. Maybe try and throw some rubber at it or I don't know how to kill electricity. Okay, um, Velma, is it the two skeletons she takes on? The the skelly thing is. And Shaggy and Scooby are with the minor 49er. Which is that seance half. Which is he's a, he was a cool guy. And it's just so interesting knowing some of the behind the scenes of that. Because I think speaking to them was amazing. But it's a very scary villain in a way because it's very humanoid. You can miss that you can almost make it out as a person and seeing the facial movements of the mask. Especially when they start talking is quite creepy. But it's weird though, because I was never a fan of the Minor 49er episode of Where Are You? Because I always thought Me that either. it was a bit of a, a shame in Where Are You when there were so many imaginative monsters and then sometimes it would be, here's a person or here's a gorilla. Like, that was never kind of my thing. But here right. I think they do it so well. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, after this, Patrick saves Valma. Shaggy and Scooby take on the cotton candy ghost, which I'm so happy to finally see a ghost they can, like, tackle. <laughs> but then it also leaves me with the question of, why was that part of the museum and stuff? If, like, there was a ghost they were so happy to face, it almost feels like, surely that would have been more notable? Yeah, because they would have had a past with that ghost. Yeah, so but then would it have been... gone beyond? We're gonna try and eat this. Oh gosh, it tastes like plaster. Hmm. What? And it's almost like this is the first time it was really real because before it yeah. was someone in a costume. Unless the the costume was made out of real cotton candy. Hmm. You're right. There should have been maybe more backstory to that. But this isn't an actual villain that they did face, is it? It's just made up for the movie. It was loosely based on the new Scooby Doo movies episode where they were in a candy factory and uh where they met ma cass elliott see the one it reminds me of yeah. is the scooby snack batter person from that willy Wonka oh yeah from what's new of... yeah <laughs> we're literally just watching that episode today just because there's like an edible monster i could get behind that you know because imagine if we were facing like a nutella monster i'd kill it <laughs> I'd be sick within a minute. You wouldn't eat it though, because you don't eat any of it. I'd hoover it up. Okay, so this is when Bell was like, I gave it to Shaggy and Scooby because they're not there and everyone's like, oh, what do we do? <laughs> um, so they break it, they, they burst into the room and that's when they all have to take on the tar monster. And I love this scene so much because it's like, I don't know, just again, this movie's so fun. Like, the them being at the ball in, in the ball at the start that I thought looked like a roller coaster to this, where Scooby literally surfs across the tar monster on a fire extinguisher. I just and feel the, like the the great um foreshadowing that we're seeing play out here. Good. Like this movie has got so many things that in my childhood I was like, yes, I want that. Like I wanted to go in the the limo mystery machine. I wanted to go in one of those balls and like roll down that thing um, from the doorbell. Um, I wanted to go to the faux ghost. I wanted to like do this that Scooby's doing. This movie's just fun. Mm, it's all right. It's all right. I like how they use the same like final battle music. Yeah. But at this stage, I'm almost like, if they did that for both of them, it always makes me think more of what could have been in the third one. I don't know, we're never going to really do an, an episode about the third movie because it really, it doesn't exist. But I always just get sad because they made so much merch for both the first and second movie. And a part of me that just likes picking stuff up from eBay is thinking, it isn't just the third movie that was cancelled, it was all the merch we would have got the, for the third movie. And I'm like, please, I need to go to an alternate reality where they made this. Okay. I am... Um, sorry. Sorry. I, I found something small out, and I'm not 100% sure how true this is. But... So, about... It's a 15-minute walk from where I am. There's this manor house, which they film things like The Crown and Bridgerton there. I did find out that... Um, and again, I'm not... Like, don't quote me on this. I'm not sure about the, like, whole legitimate, like, if it's legit or, or not. But apparently, either for the first one of the third movies, we almost got all the, you know, Scooby Doo, Mr. Begins, and Curse Late Monster Cast third movie. That's where they were planning on filming some scenes. So, I, what I'm mad about is I could have literally been there on set, kind of thing <laughs> for Scooby Doo. I would have found out as a kid and been there. Well, it is a shame Flabbit. because wasn't bo weren't both the cancelled films? They would have been okay. in England. Yeah, yeah. It's a curse. Like we were <laughs> hurting. <laughs> okay, so back to this one, and we said about the amount of iconic movies that come from this, and iconic lines as well. We're about to get to the bit where Scooby pushes the button on the control panel, going Scooby, do we do? You just have to love it. I like it. And it reverses all the monsters, which I think is 
a downgrade in a way from loads of demons exploding in the first one just to have maybe four monsters just flopping into fabric but it's a great scene and i think just seeing the evil mask figure getting thwarted after they were so imposing it's kind of very scooby-esque you kind of get the scary and now you've got just the the costume to take off so very traditional scooby which i really like so jb talk us through the unmasking so you get um there's the evil mask figure and they rip the head off to reveal that it's um alicia silverstone have just bahau <laughs> but then they reveal that it's jonathan jacoba who looks like Millie's prom day. Oh, God. Um, JB! And then there's all this kind of thing where Wickles is like, oh my gosh, it's you. Why were you trying to frame me? Because they there's a little bit of a rivalry between them. They're not very friendly with each other. They used to steal each other's lunch. They were not friends. Not the tater tots. And I actually didn't know what tater tots were until very recently. Oh, really? No, I just thought they were like... I thought Tater Tots were like little cuddly toys. Like, almost... <laughs> like... Not jelly babies, what am I thinking of? Like little <laughs> creatures, lovable creatures. Like Teletubbies. Like, little Teletubbies. Teletubbies are terrifying. Are they? <laughs> yeah. I thought they were just lovable creatures. But anyway, I just thought Tater Tots... He had like a load of little Funkos in his cell that old man would... Like Jacoba would take... <laughs> But yeah. My fair lady as well stole the lead part. Which is How not fair, because I think that Wickles would have been a better. Actually, isn't my fair lady the one about the prostitute? Or is that. No, no, no. The... My fair lady, um, for those of you who don't know, is. Okay, if I remember correctly, um, it's about. So there's this like pompous professor called Henry Higgins and he's so like sure of his ability he can take anyone and make them this pristine like princess kind of thing. So he takes a cockney working class girl um, in into, you know, someone who can be passed for a member of high society. So Eliza, uh, Eliza, Eliza Doolittle, um, who was played by Audrey Hepburn, who's amazing. Um, agrees to do like speech lessons to improve stuff and you know it's all about turning someone who's cockney into someone who's i guess some people would say like me from hampshire and has a posh accent if you want to say it like that oh so it's i like it oh so it is like the kingsman like they said in that the kingsman it is nice so i think maybe wickles would have been the professor I always thought he'd be playing the lady for some reason. <laughs> okay. Well, actually, he would have to... Millie, stop interrupting. They would have to we because... we start talking at the same time? Well, prison <laughs> isn't multi-gender, right? So one man would have to play the woman. The prisons... Unless they are multi... Are they... How are the prisons like in, in America Smash? Are they multi-gendered or just male prisons, female prisons? Um, It probably depends on the location you're at, honestly. Huh. That's alright. From what I've seen on Netflix, I think like initially when you get arrested, you're kind of held at the same station. But once yeah. you're actually remanded in custody, then you're kind of taken to a larger place which is then gender specific see that's right. what i'd want to do because i wouldn't want or i'd want to change it because i wouldn't want to be in a prison with just guys <laughs> i'd want some women of course you would <laughs> guys are they can be violent can't they i wouldn't like that so women some of the crimes women have done yeah, like, I, don't know. I don't know about that um, so I guess we get the real identity of Ned. Is Ned. Which is Ned. Ned. <laughs> and I'm there for that. But what I'm not there for is all the Seth Green stuff. But, you know, that's just... It's cute for what it is. Don't hate on Seth Green. Yeah. Uh, uh, you're, uh, was, you're just angry that he makes Velma even more likeable. Like, she... and him and Linda Cardellini do a really good job of making Velma the best character in this live action Do movie. we think Seth Green would have been in the third movie? Or do you think it, I again, would have been 
separated from this I one. I probably would think not. They don't seem very good with continuity. <laughs> True. <laughs> Can I quickly say, Millie, I, I agree with you about the whole Velma thing and why JB doesn't like him, but also I think it's because where Seth Green was cuddling Sam Michelle Gellar. Yeah, Alex's that wedding. picture recently. <laughs> JB was getting envy. Well, <laughs> I don't know. Okay, so it, any other points to add on the movie? Anybody before we go to the ratings of Smosh or Pass? The final dance was cute. Oh, and the Daphne tattoo fan had such a prominent part in this, JB. You were pointing it out all the way through. It was good. <laughs> it was good. JB. Oh. Okay, so it sounds like we're going to our ratings and JB, as always, we're starting with you and your many words of wisdom. So smash or pass? This is a fun one. I'll give it, I'll give it a smash. I recommend it. That it? Check it out. <laughs> Any, if you had well, to like maybe add another 10 words. Good composer, good editor, good nerd. Good minor 49er. Yeah. Good stuff. What about you, Millie? What do you think about the film? I think it's a really fun movie. I really like it. It's it's good. It's one that I'd watch again. I think, like, something that I think can never be under... Like, it. I think... Something that can never be appreciated enough in the live-action movies is Matthew Lillard's acting. Like, the scenes that they do with Scooby are all so good. Like, there's one bonus feature where they just sat talking to themselves, almost, yeah. like, in tears at where Scooby would be sat, about how, like, he doesn't think they're going to make it and stuff like that. And it's just... Their acting is literally so integral to this movie. Um. So, yeah, for me, it has to be a definite smash, too. So, I guess next... We'll say Rihanna. Would you say smash or pass to Scooby Doo 2 Monsters Unleashed? I love this movie. You know, the acting is so good. And, you know, kudos to every single one because I do think that this was a step up acting wise from the first one because I think, you know, they did one movie, they've established themselves as characters so they don't have to go through as much background work to figure out how they want to play them and I think acting wise it came a bit more natural um you know everything was amazing from the very beginning to the end and you know the music the scores it was all masterfully done and one thing that just comes to mind is like no one can outbeat Scooby and Shaggy because they're the greatest detectives like they have a whole little song that they do and that's amazing <laughs> But I, I just I love this movie and so I'd smash it because I watched it many times and I'm going to keep watching it and hopefully when I watch it on Sky Sky Cinema or whatever it's being shown on it doesn't always end up being on that one scene because it makes me laugh but like I just want to watch it from the beginning without having to get the DVD out. <laughs> okay, so. So far, I think that is three smashes. And then that just leaves Smash. So, Smash, would you say Smash or Pass for Scooby Doo 2 Monsters Unleashed? Do you even need to ask? You could have just skipped over me and moved on. Yeah, I was like, who do we say to the last Rihanna or Smash? But I knew Rihanna's always so positive that I was just like, okay, we're gonna, gonna wait and see what Smash <laughs> really thinks of this movie. Is it just oh, yes. an act how yes. positive you are about it, or is it a real love? Oh, <laughs> yeah, true. Uh, no, I love this one so much. <laughs> it's the one that I've watched so many times. I honestly feel like, um, you know, because there are a bunch of Scooby movies at this point, but just where this one actually ended up on the big screen, and you could add the fact that it's live action, I just feel like this is one of those movies that's just like a love letter to the franchise. And so it's 
Like, if you love Scooby Doo, I, I think there's just something for every Scooby fan in this one, you know, because there are still some of those like jokes thrown in, but there's all the nostalgia thrown in as well. It's, mm, it's so good. Ooh, so this is another <laughs> year, none of us <laughs> smash. <laughs> JB. <laughs> So, next week, we are going to be going on to Scooby-Doo and the Mystery Begins, but before that, we have community news. So, first of all, JB, I know you were doing, like, 10 posts this week about Me? new things released on Double Box oh, Toys. Oh, well, yeah, 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 I'm sorry. I'm... So, if we start with that, because well... I guess there's a lot. So, Double Box Toys have released a couple of new Scooby t-shirts, there's some Scooby bags... Um, mm -hmm. some like knitted figures as well. Knitted Knit what? style figure, like knitted style vinyl oh, figures. Yeah, there's those stupid robot toys that I'm. I don't it like. They kind of scare me. I want to wait for a Daphne one because they're so stupid though. But I would like them if it wasn't for the fact that they look like little Coraline things. And it's <laughs> Coraline that's put me off that style. Nothing that's against the design. True. I just ew, it triggers me. Okay. That's why I couldn't get Lala Lootsies as well. Mm -hmm. I got scared. So that was the double box toys. Then Funko Pops, the Funko Europe or Funko, Funko well, just whatever, Funko, just Funko. has announced like so many new things. So, um, JB, I think you had the list. If you go across again, there of all of them, right? There's well, meant to no, be. No, no, no. This is let me because this one doesn't have. Oh no, this does have all of them. Yeah, it does. So. Sorry. so um funko pops news posted on instagram that there's going to be funko sodas for shaggy scooby um the yeah, see, this clown the ab it. okay you do right, it then well maybe smash can do it but this is the shaggy scooby ghost clown abominable snowman the creeper and the phantom shadow all with the little like Funko soda bag as well. I think they've that called looks it Scooby specific. A cooler. You know, oh yeah, like... it's a cooler. Yeah, yeah because it's, they're meant to be designed off drinks, I guess. Drink cooler. It's a bit weird, but it's cool. They're so... gonna be broke. Yeah. Yes. Certainly, <laughs> lots of things coming out there, which is exciting. I guess my negative about <laughs> it is that every single one of the the villains, but with the exception of the Abominable Snowman, are already base Funko Pops. So it's almost like Funko aren't... They don't have confidence in other monsters and other type of Scooby things to say, okay, this monster will sell, so will this one, so will that one. It's, okay, people know the Creeper, let's make the Creeper pop, let's make the Creeper soda. Same with the Phantom Shadow. Also something that I think is like... I'm presuming this here... But I imagine most of the chases for this is just going to be glow in the dark, which is a bit of a shame because you can't tell the initial like differences. No, I mean I am hoping that they're actually going to do something good with this. So I guess for the ghost clown, if the chase was holding that stopwatch thing, mm, that, would, that be cool. would be amazing. We said that a flocked Scooby would be really good for Shaggy. The red T-shirt variant mm. would be mm. really good as well. Yes, please. But. Abominable Snowman and Phantom Shadow glow. And I think the Creeper was confirmed to be a glow as well, which I don't love. But again, what else could you do with the Creeper, really? Mm. Mm. Kind of a shame. Like, But still, it's cool to have the figures. I guess it's just not something where you really feel like you need to pursue the chase if it's just a glow in the dark. Yeah. But yeah, um, other community news, JB... Oh, Did we say we were going to be more... speaking about something that we could announce here? There's some more crap from um, that bloody place. What's it called? They do the, the figurines. They've done the winter variants of the gang, the summer mm. variants of the gang. But I just get annoyed whenever I see them because they don't ship to the UK unless you want to trade a kidney for it. So, yeah, <laughs> screw that. Um, um, can I announce the thing that we talked about announcing at the end of this video, please? No, yeah, you're in charge. You can announce what you want. Okay, so in theory, when this goes out, we should, which is tomorrow as of recording, Sunday, yeah. we should be announcing, or well, should have announced the winner of the Kent Bader giveaway Woo! today. Yay! 
and we are starting straight away with our next giveaway and as you know we've just reviewed scooby-doo 2004 which you know featured the amazing sea ernst her we will be giving away a signed minor 49er picture and it's got their quote on it as well from yeah, the movie your varmints. yeah <laughs> So that's going to be the new giveaway. Um, JB, correct me if I'm wrong here, but I think the best thing to do if you're interested in that is to go and check out our Instagram. Yeah, check where out the gram. The, IG. the terms and everything will be just released on there with a picture of the item itself. So yeah, so that's exciting. Lots of cool stuff coming up. I'm very happy. Um, our next review will be. The next review begins. Let me think. Well, no, I wouldn't have announced any more interviews at this. So yeah, the next one will be the mystery begins, which will be, if, if my notes are correct, our forty fifth review, which is crazy, right? Like Ooh. it means we've nearly done this every day, every week for a year with Smash, and for about yeah, half it's a year with years. Brianna. Gosh, that's flown. I think when we do have our last ever recording, we should make it a Zoom call. And then we should That'd reunite together in ten in ten years. Even if we're still talking, in ten years we just do another Zoom call and then we die because we'll we be better still be talking. I think the only the only people that may not be talking is probably me and JB, me and Rihanna, because after Endgame, what? Rihanna might have <laughs> disowned me. What? Wait, 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 what? <laughs> what? What, JB? Because you might what? dislike me after you watch Endgame, and I'll be sad because wait. I like talking Why to you. Why would I, JB? I, I would not hate you. I would not stop talking to you ever. I promise. Oh, yeah. Even like if I was going to stop talking to you, it would have been when you put a certain picture in the group chat or <laughs> when you bullied me on last week's episode and probably this week's episode what about Rihanna, do you remember that april fools does yeah, every well, year well, we're gonna i was, have oh, yeah, I I was gonna mention definitely. that but i definitely would have stopped talking like you've done a lot jb a lot that i would have stopped talking to someone for but you're my friend and your family to me and mm -hmm. you know as a wise person has said many times in a great show called supernatural Family doesn't <laughs> end with blood, and you know you guys are family. So. And Ohana yeah. means family. I mean, JB, I'm making yeah. no promises. I might not be talking to you in ten years. Well, I want to say that <laughs> for the people that love watching the podcast, you know, watching the interviews and listening to the reviews, right? I would say that we've got enough love and respect for them that even if we broke up in a year's time, we would reunite on a Zoom call. For the for the ten year reunion. When you say break up, do you mean the group of friends break up or me and you? Well, break me up? and you. Okay. If we broke up in a no, year, no, no. for whatever reason, we'd still we'd join the Neither. same call. I we? refuse to allow you to. I forbid it. I I, I, I forbid do a Zoom call with Smash and Rihanna. So we do like a, it's like, been forbidden. <laughs> like um like the Buffy reunion. Like I'm just in a separate room recording. Like <laughs> like like they did with Xander. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, man. Like I had such a great time. Yeah. What? No, you you come on, because they want to see us both together. <laughs> That's yeah. With grey hair. I think it's gonna be grey in ten years' time. Well, no, because if okay, well, I've safe. calculated cool. that if we're doing every episode twice or three times a week, maybe it's gonna take three years to do every single one. No, I, that's when I calculated it at one episode yeah, a week. Yeah, so it's so gonna take a year. A year. Mm -hmm. So say in a year's time, it'll be twenty twenty three, and I'll be how old? You'll be 24. So that'll be 34. Oh, I wouldn't be grey. Well, 20 years we could reunite after 20 years. Then I'll be... Well, we're going to reunite, whatever. We're going to reunite. Just stop. But I'm just, my point is, even worst case scenario, we join the Zoom call. Because, because we love the people here. And we love the people that, that listen. Whoa, why are you looking at me like that? Looking at you like what? What are you gonna kill me? I don't know <coughs> what you mean. Well, okay. I would not be with another woman. Oh my gosh. That's what I'm gonna say. Baby, you're so romantic. I, I know, right? Like that's what I always say. I'm gosh. Mr. Romantic. Okay, well this took a weird turn at the end. Um Thanks so much everyone for listening and please insert blooper of JB um, making a disgusting smell and then getting the air freshener dropped on him. 
and I'm mm. I'm gonna oh. keep it short. Uh oh. Yeah. Are we having another spider? Are you okay? Jesus Christ! Jesus Christ! Are you okay? No! <laughs> Don't be worried. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> oh my god. Oh, I'm sorry, I thought I'd hit mute on the mic in time. Not before. really, huh? <laughs> JP made a disgusting oh. noise and a disgusting smell, so I sprayed the aerosol on him. And it landed in his face. It went in my it mouth, and then you dropped the canister and it landed on my ghoulies. Oh my uh. god. Are you okay? <laughs> Are your ghoulies okay? <laughs> I'm so sorry. It was just I'm sure they do. Those are sensitive. Oh my god. <laughs> Is this another one for the bloopers? <laughs> oh. I'm telling you, they got the sound of that in the video as well, Jamie. Those ones swell. <laughs> oh. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not lefty. What? Oh, yeah. <laughs> that one's my favorite. One blooper. We can have one blooper. We can have one blooper. Oh god, that really hurt. Are you okay, JB? It's resting on my leg. What? Well, where Millie, was... are you okay? Where Remember was... to breathe. No, Shush. Where was Smash? Because I, 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 let's let's let's. Let's continue from where Smash was before the dreadful noise that I've produced, <laughs> and then we can add that in as one blooper. <laughs>